All right, well, good evening, everyone. It's 7.30, so I will officially call to order the Planning Board meeting for uh, September 23rd, 2019. Um, I'm going to be leading or facilitating the discussion tonight, just as our chairwoman is um, under the a little under the weather, but we're glad that, that she is here. So, um, yeah. Um, so just really quickly before we get going, I just wanted to go through the agenda and just um, give everybody a chance of, of timing and expectations. Um, we do have a number of administrative items that we're going to cover off on first. Um, and I think that we'll hopefully get through uh, a couple of the, the early items um, pretty quickly, the, the traffic signal and the Form K. Um, the commercial photovoltaic solar facility on Wood Street, I'm thinking hopefully about 30 minutes of discussion there. Um, the Buckland and Leonard Street, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that we can make some good progress there, but I think um, about 45 minutes for that discussion. Um, and then uh, Chessmore Funeral Home, again, I'm cautiously optimistic that we can uh, move along there, so hopefully about 30 minutes for, for that discussion. Um, and then we have uh, about 15 minutes for the presentation on the Cedar Street. And then the last thing is on the ANR for Fruit Street. We're actually going to move that up a little bit in the agenda since it, it should be a, a quick one. So um, just some general guidelines, and then I'm hopeful that, that we can abide as closely as possible by those times. Does that make sense for everyone on the planning board? Okay. Um, we'll, we'll start going through the administrative items, but first and foremost, I just um, wanted to formally... Uh, welcome Jane Moran to the, the planning board. Thank you very much. Um, I've had the pleasure of serving with Jane on the Upper Charles Trails Committee and she's been a, a long time uh, citizen of the town and a very engaged citizen of the town. So um, welcome Jane. And I don't know if you want to say a few words about yourself or? Oh, well, I'm really pleased to be here tonight and I'm hoping that I can <coughs> add a lot of thought and value and con continue to contribute. All right. Thank you. Well, we're, uh, we're thrilled to have you. And actually, um, one other thing that we probably could have done before we started the meeting, but I know there's a request for a, a new picture now that we have a full board. Um, I don't know if you guys have a preference of whether we wait till the end or whether do we try to do a quick picture now. That's what I was wondering. Let's do it real quick. Can we do it real quick? Okay. Yeah, Somebody in the audience will help us out, obviously. Who has the most current um, phone? <laughs> not me. With the best camera. Okay. Not me. Where are we standing? Oh, no, I'm in front of the. The doors. The doors. Yeah. Can you take off the lime green signs? Perhaps. So, what's that? Motion to the we're going to just continue. Feel free to adjust. Um, so, second administrative item um, has to do with the open space committee liaison, and um, currently Fran DeYoung is serving in that capacity. Um, However, there is a requirement that um, the, uh, the one member from the board, that, that there is one member of the planning board on that. Um, but this is an appointment that, this is a position that is appointed by the select board. Um, so for us, we just need to make a recommendation to the select board of who we would like to serve as that representative on the open space uh, committee. So at this point, are there any volunteers for people that would like to I do that? that. 
Jane would be interested in that. I did volunteer myself okay. without knowing that, it, you know, that someone else has put in the name for it. But Are there if, any other interested parties? If no one else wants it, I could probably figure it out. So then I guess, um, do we need to vote on a recommendation? Okay. I motion that we nominate Jane Moran as our nominee for the Open Space Preservation Commission. Second. Liaison. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Uh, just that we're lucky to have her serving that capacity. So it's not just uh, that she's willing, um, she has an awful lot of um, talent and expertise and investment in that area. So we're lucky to have that um, as part of the ongoing conversation. Well, thank you very much. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? All right. Congratulations, Jane. Thank you again. <laughs> so, through the vice chair, um, I will talk to the board's uh, select board secretary, and she'll put you on the agenda to get nominated. I don't know when, um, but I'll let you know when I hear back. Thank you, John. All right. Um, in the meantime, though, definitely connect to the meetings. Yes, because absolutely. even if you you can't vote yet, you can be catching up on what's going on. All right, um, third item: a growth study committee, growth study committee alternate appointments. And so, um, the advertisement has been posted, and the ten day advertising period has lapsed. So um, we've had um, two applications, and there are the two people that were previously appointed. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm hopeful that we can reappoint them: Wilson St. Pierre and Dave Wheeler. I would we'll like make a motion. Enthusiastically make that motion. Okay, second. Okay, any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain? All right. Um, the sidewalk survey. So this one, I think we're actually gonna push this a little bit later because I think there are a couple of hearings that we want to get to and there might be some further discussion here. And um, you're all apologize. John and I talked about this afternoon just okay. we're trying to fit in the schedule. Yeah. Um, so I'm hopeful that we will have this sidewalk discussion uh, later tonight, but um, at this point we're going to hold off on that. Um, Main Street Corridor Project. So this is something that I, I have an interest in, I think some other people might as well. And I know there's been, a, I think, a lot of conversation going on in the community. And so I think, John, if um, you're willing to give us just a quick update on the Main Street Corridor Project and specifically um, what the needs are for the easements that we've heard a lot about. And I'll say that I think officially we, we talked about this last week that this is not within the jurisdiction of the planning board, but I think just all of us as planning board members I think would, would like to have a little bit more clarity or understanding about what's, what's happening on the project. <clears throat> so um, VHB, the town and MassDOT's um, consultant for the project submitted an ENF. They had the site walk for the ENF last week. I attended that. Um, so for the site walk, I, I don't know who, who's been on these types of site walks, but you basically meet, have a discussion about the project, and then you actually go on the site. Walk. So most of the meeting itself was um, going over what was proposed. Uh, they had a bunch of plans out, and we talked about easements. We talked about uh, historic stuff and just the plans for the project. So right now, um, it's going through the MEPA process. There's public comment that can be taken um, through that at the state level there uh, it came out that there is still a approval and approval needed from the historical <coughs> district commission uh, for the work that's proposed near the common um, i can add to that sure. we have scheduled a public hearing for october 10th at 7 yep. p.m at the senior center thank you um, and so right now they, they kind of just gave an overview of what the plan for the corridor was showed uh, some of the drawings talked about the trees that needed to come down and that's actually why they filed for MEPA because there were certain trees of certain diameters that needed to come down and that's really the only trigger um, for MEPA. They talked about the easements and they didn't have, so I asked um, VHB for a plan, kind of a sketch or an exhibit that shows what ease, where the easements are going to be needed, what type of easements are going to be needed, um, and a little bit more information on that. They didn't have anything. They have a, a roadway plan that they haven't gotten to me yet because they're changing it this week. So they've been working to change the plans to reduce the need for permanent easements. So right now there are, um, let me see if I can get this right, temporary easements, permanent taking easements, and permanent utility easements. 
and they are really trying to cut down on the permanent taking easements. So the temporary easements are really for construction. They're gonna be going on property. They're gonna to have to move rocks or any other things to basically install the sidewalks, install the road, and then they're gonna put everything back uh, the way that it was. They're gonna have permanent utility easements, which really kind of include poles and guy wires. It's not gonna be large scale easements. Um, and a lot of those are where there already are poles and guy wires and stuff. And then the, the permanent taking easements, they didn't really give that much information on those because I think they're trying to reduce those as much as possible, so they didn't say what they were. But there are, they did say there were gonna be some, but they didn't give us any more information about that. So when I get a plan, a roadway plan, I can forward that along to you guys uh, if they'll allow me to. Um, and I'm pushing for some kind of just sketch or exhibit that lets us know a little bit more about what the actual easements are. But until they've got all that stuff ironed out, because they're making all these changes, they have the historical district commission meeting that might change things. Um, they're redesigning certain things just based on feedback. Uh, so once we get more concrete plans, we'll actually know what those easements are. And as, as far as I know, the town has not started the process of obtaining these easements. So they're still trying to figure out what they need. Any sense on timing of those new plans and when this information will they be They told me they, they can get something this week. I need to follow up with them and I you know those things change so it might not be this week but I will definitely ask. So I had asked Dave Del Torio today because for the historic district public hearing we have to send have the plans available two weeks in advance so he was thinking he'd wait for them to be tomorrow so they'd be available for the public two weeks in advance for a hearing. Okay. Does, I'm sorry that is the easement plans? Um, well for us it's mostly things that are concerned the historic district okay. which is the common all the way through um, Muffin House Cafe and at 76 Main Street as well. So they don't have easement plans. They have just basic pl site plans, roadway plans that you guys are familiar with yeah. uh, that should show the easements on them. Yeah, um, they're a little hesitant to get those out to the public because the general public is not you know, adept at reading types of plans like that. So they don't want confusion. They don't want you know, misinformation being spread. Uh, so they're trying to clean those up as, as best they can before they can distribute them to the public. So I will get so them to you guys. Hang on one second. So, I mean, I, I can understand that, but just given the amount of concern and, and, and conversation, I mean, it, it seems like it would make sense to at least have a, a public input form right. or an and overview or some type of program. And they will. Program. They okay. will. I think the Historic District Commission meeting is going to do that. And this MEPA process is doing that as well. Um, I don't know if there's any other type of public process that's involved in this. Uh, at the local the level, we're going to have something. Are they? Too. Oh, then yes, actually, they are having something, and it might be tomorrow. What are they doing? It is. <laughs> They're having a, a public mm -hmm. input about this. Um, what time? Yeah. I'm opening the agenda. I think it's I, I yeah, know, yeah, know, four. Um, but one other thing is, I did talk to VHB and Dave Del Torrio, who's kind of heading this project up, and they are more than happy to come in and give the planning board an update uh, at the next meeting or at a separate <coughs> meeting if you guys want to include public input. Um, I just need to reach out to them and set something up. But they are happy to do that because I think they said they did it like eight months ago, and they said it's probably. They did come. Ready. They tried mm -hmm. on to. Yeah. So yeah. it's at seven forty-five tomorrow at the selectman's meeting. Seven forty-five to eight thirty. It says. Town hall. Select board. Sorry. Seven thirty at town hall. Seven forty-five. Seven forty-five to eight thirty. Yeah. David, you had a Thank question. You. Uh, on it? Muriel's also got her fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so. You know the signs. Um, John, do you know the um, deadline on public comment for the ENF process? Mm -hmm. Not off the top of my head, but I can find it for you. Um, and just be prepared, if anybody's watching this and is interested, just be prepared to field that question if that's something that's important to people. Um, and then, uh, similar to Gary, uh, the plan to engage with the public and comment um, I appreciate and applaud the, the select board for uh, planning tomorrow's engagement process, but is the, it, I guess I would put it out there into the mist and into the universe that once the easement, um, easement process is more definitive and they know exactly what's going to happen on people's property, that there's a specific process for engaging with those residents um, and letting them know exactly what's going on. I would tag on to that. They should probably know before we know. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Before it hot loose, it was like it had historically happened. David? So I guess I'm a little confused on the utility easement. Uh, my impression is the big 
advantage of this was the underground utilities through the center of town. To me, that would envision a utility trench to people's houses, but the way John stated it, it did not sound anything at all like that. So um, I'm not super familiar with what they are. They kind of gave that as an example, and that example was down by Mayhew and Wood Street. Okay. So maybe there's you know underground utilities down the main part of it, but then closer to the end, that's yeah. where the pool is. I, I do know like the underground utility is stopping at the police station, so that would make sense. Yeah. But the, but the corridor actually extends all yes, the way to the yeah, yeah, it, it goes. It actually even turns onto Wood Street because I believe they're trying to do a left turn onto Wood Street at that line. Okay. Turn. Thanks for that clarification. Yep. And so it looks like the uh, comments are due by October 1st. Awesome. Um, they may extend that, but I, I don't know for sure. Right. Comments due to Mipa? Yes. Okay. That's a week from now. So that's uh, next Tuesday. So just one week, really, if people have comments they want to make. Yes, next Tuesday. Thank you, John. Okay. Yes. Uh, historically, the uh, town engineer and state uh, engineers have come before this board. This board doesn't have oversight, but uh, it is the right thing to do to include us in planning as we're the planning board. And we've given them feedback on this project. Uh, going back to when uh, Town Hall was in South Street and uh, the plan was in the opening of the building and it was all spread out as you walk in and um, I don't think the state's done a really good job of listening. I don't know if it's Dave working with the state not conveying what he's hearing or, or what but I'm a little frustrated because there's a crosswalk missing to taken away from the respite center. Um, I think they actually. Yeah, they did in. Excellent. Yeah. Then so they are listening. But it, I'd be looking forward to whatever you can share with us, when you can share it with us, uh, because like everyone, I have questions like that and other things. So, so, so let's let's leave it at this. Public input meeting tomorrow night, if people can make it, 7:45. Um, public comments by October 1st for the MEPA process, and then if, if we can get them on the schedule to come in and give an overview, I think that'd be useful. And let's just make sure we schedule enough time because I, I know there will be some specific questions from, from this group. So I think this was just meant as a as kind of a quick update. Um, just to kind of- I recommend after the historic district commission, I don't expect it's gonna happen right at well, it didn't happen before, right? That's, mm -hmm. oh, okay, but we should have as much other information as possible. So. Yeah. Agreed. Okay, um, I'm going to keep moving forward just because we have a full agenda, but um, halt participation in uh, future open space discussion and reviews. Um, so uh, we had a request that halt be included earlier in the process for projects that will eventually have conservation restriction as part of the approval. Um, so John, do you just want to comment really quickly sure. on what this entails? Sure. So uh, Maury Gasser. There he is. Um, asked if, if HALT could be included earlier in the process. Uh, so basically the issue was they were getting conservation restrictions deeded over to them after everything has been done, after everything's been approved, and they haven't had any chance to put any input in. Uh, so I'm bringing it before the board to see if there is interest to include them earlier in the process and uh, how the board would like that to be done. Um, so there's a couple options so we can forward the information on open space plans to HALT. Uh, I can talk to Maury and get a, a contact person for that. Um, when we send it to town boards and committees, um, we can just send them a notice when the hearing is supposed to be on for the first time so that they can attend. Uh, or we can <coughs> reach out to them and ask for comment letters um, when the application is submitted. Do you have a recommendation? Um, Kobe, would it be difficult to send? No. Okay. no, no, no. So I think that just to get them the plans, the information just from the beginning. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll talk to Maury and get a contact person and, and do that. Through the chair, I have one question. Mm -hmm. um, HALT is a nonprofit private organization, and do we have an obligation then to send them out to other? parties that hold conservation restrictions, such as Stedbury Valley or Charles, any, River, Valley Charles River or any of the others? Are, are, are we, 
I think um, the way we can fix solve that is if the uh, applicant has a preference of who they they plan on deeding it over to, we can send it to whoever they plan on deeding it over to. But um, it, we, I don't know if we have an obligation. It's more of um, mm -hmm. courtesy. Uh, courtesy. And if Sudbury Valley or anybody else wants that courtesy, we're, we can do well, that I know as well. they're really picky anyway. <laughs> but um, okay, thank you. I just was trying to cover the bases here. Mr. Gaster, does that work for you? Yeah, that's the input. And then some process by which we could comment on what so we see. Yes. So, so I will say the planning board is very good at um, allowing for public comment. So I think anytime there's a public hearing, um, we're generally pretty inclusive and give everybody a chance to, to share their perspective. So it seems like if we get you the information ahead of time, and then if you have specific comments, that could either be in, in, in writing um, or you could you could come to any of the hearings and, and comment as well. And just just to clarify, this is for open space plans only. It's not going to be for any solutions. <coughs> right. right. Just for open space plans. And for clarification, were you just elected to uh, the board, uh, the presence of the board last week? I will be Wednesday. Wednesday. Congratulations <laughs> in advance. Okay. All right. Thanks, John, for that, and um, thanks, Mr. Gasser, for reaching out and engaging with us. So. Um, next item, Davenport, Hayden Woods, reseeding of Basin. Um, and hopefully everybody had a chance to look through and see the photos um, of the reseeding effort. I don't think there's um, any action for us to take here, but just had it on there given as a, as a, as a follow-up to some earlier discussion. And um, Did anybody have any comments or, Deb? Yeah, I sort of felt that um, even though it receded nicely in certain areas, there's still sort of a marshy wetness to it. Um, and whether appropriate plantings be contributed in the area that's mar marshy, just thinking of the mosquito population problems we've been having, and that anything that stays wet will become a problem. Um, you know, insecticides are used um, as a possible thing, but natural plantings and, and something um, more um, environmentally sound long term enduring i'm just wondering what the board thinks about that about you know the fact that if when you do flip through the pictures there is a certain portion that is muddy and um, seems to be not growing grass which is probably natural because it's a low spot and there's really nothing wrong with that it's just that it's muddy and wet and something something could be suggested perhaps sort of in the rain garden vein where they, they're planting something that's a natural mm -hmm. um, um, grass of some sort um, that would absorb some of that moisture um, in the low-lying lands. And I don't know where, where, where what we do um, has its mets and bounds, but um, I think it'd be a nice suggestion in the future. Seems very reasonable to me. It's, it's it a known well. wet area. It seems like it makes sense to and I don't think that there's anything that keeps us from giving them that feedback. And if they wanted to put a couple more plantings or pay some attention to that, they might. Okay. A letter. Would Thanks, Doug. Would you like me to write a letter to them? Uh, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, I think that makes sense. Or An email. I, mean, or is, I don't know. is easiest, right? Okay. It doesn't have to be a big, big thing. If I lived close by to that, I would probably be concerned about the mosquitoes, and, and I would be very, very happy to see some, some change that, that might potentially help mm -hmm. reduce that risk. If I may ask, um, Deb, did you have some plantings in mind, some or some some uh, even a website to direct them to that, that John could put in a, in a memo to them? Um, to I could probably get you something. Okay. I can find a few different resources that have some wonderful. Because I think it's now in the hands of the homeowners association, mm -hmm. and so yeah, probably yeah. any resources we can give them would be great. Okay, sure. That's a good idea. Um, okay, uh, moving on to 1.8. Um, so this is also just an FYI, the select board recently updated the host community agreement to include the modifications to the trails the planning board recently approved. Um, so there's a, a copy of that. Um, and uh, again, I'll just open up to see if anybody had any specific comments or questions with regards to that um, new host community agreement. Okay. Um, 
All right, thanks everyone. That was a reasonably efficient discussion, so I appreciate it. Um, I think that the next couple of items are, we do have specific call-outs for them, but I, I think that they are hopefully more administrative in nature before we get to the hearings. Um, so the first is the um, Legacy Farms North uh, traffic signal. Can we, can we back up a little bit? Um, the, the host community agreement um, as written and as signed by the select board, what kind of purview do we have over that? Can we put forth suggestion to the wording um, of certain things? I mean, it seems like it's a done deal, but I thought it took a huge leap um, in the terms that were used, um, and I don't think it was our intention when we wrote it that those terms would be so interpreted. Specifically, I'm assuming the museum you, yeah, parcel. Yeah, museum parcel. We had designated it as a cultural area. Cultural slash recreation. Yeah, cultural okay. slash recreation. And and um, I feel that it takes it's taken a leap out of the public hands to interpret it like that. And I think we've already proved it as a cultural recreation area, and it should be so sad. It should not. Um, my suggestion would be to have a conversation with town council because. That was who signed it, correct? It's the board. Um, I don't know how does that work. <laughs> so uh, the planning board doesn't really have any authority over that. Mm -hmm. So the board can act as residents and talk before the select board and bring those comments up okay. or write a letter uh, bringing those comments up. Okay. But to the chair, we can as a board uh, support or not support something as a board. And while we may not have oversight of an agreement, we can say, well, we don't support this X, Y, and Z. So um, if there were advice from legal counsel uh, saying, well, in this matter, I don't want to get too far afield, but it's, it's, it's possible. The intention as, of what the vote We're elected, an elected board, we can act as a board to agree or disagree with something. If it's out of our purview, it's correct. But the board can't change the document. So, so we could write a letter stating a preference to change it, correct. or a request to change it. But we can't actually make the decision right. to right. change it. We can do it as a board or as individuals. Yes. If, yeah. If you're making that distinction, yes. So, can I ask a, a hopefully clarifying question? It is uh, about identifying the museum parcel as the museum parcel, yes. which we did not do. And we did not do a town meeting either. And we did it very specifically not to. Our, it was our intention to make it cultural and not to take a leap so far um, down the line that it would become museum only. So, I agree. Um, so here's the thing, right? We, we have purview over the zoning um, recommendations. Um, actually, how the select board decides to drive and, and pursue different, um, different ideas or, or initiatives is their purview, too. So I guess I, guess I agree with you. Uh, and we don't have any we don't have any say over the way they they write the um, the host community agreement. Um, I would kind of like to if we're gonna give directed feedback, I would like ra personally, I would rather um, be specific in that feedback, not just say we support it or we don't support it, um, and intentionally uh, suggest that we. We're not endorsing a museum parcel in any way by our vote. Um, I don't believe that the um, town meeting voters were asked to endorse a museum parcel either, um, and that um, the select board would be right to contemplate that getting the public's input on whether or not that is the desired uh, use of that property would be pretty important. Do you, um, would you like me to, to write, write a paragraph or two for for John's purview um, on said topic and see if see if we can put it together correctly. Um, Jane just said it's on their um, oh, okay. agenda for tomorrow, tomorrow night. Okay. Um, so 
I, the, the time is now if somebody wanted to put together some comments that just um, affirmed our vote and our understanding of the town meeting vote. Can you uh, clarify? It's, it's, not, it's not exclusively for museums. It still could be cultural or recreational. Correct. It's just the term museum personal. It's, yes. a, it's a little suggestive, I, I would think say. it's leading. And, and it may very well be what their heart's desire is, um, but it isn't necessarily um, anything I understand the public to have voted on right. or, su or support. And I think it's really important for the public to understand that the interpretation has become more narrow and specific in, a, in an official document. Yeah, I agree. But I don't know what we can, how we can necessarily impact their official document. Well, I, I don't think, know what their thinking was on that necessarily. I think, I, I think we can do exactly what we've talked about, make sure that um, we, we put in um, eloquent terms um, how this has adjusted and is not what our original thinking is, then it's not what was voted on in town meeting. So I think the challenge though is if, if it's on their agenda for tomorrow night, then we've got to have that pulled together for I will. tomorrow night. I will. Um, I will. Oh, okay. <coughs> so I don't think we can do it that fast. I okay. think as I'm, I'm thinking and listening okay. and contemplating, um, we can certainly find out what people say tomorrow night. We can pay attention to what public comments are and then um, and find out what the select board also communicates on the subject. And then at our next meeting, um, if, if, you, if you want us to take the action and watch it and, and, um, and take in the comments and so forth and propose a letter, we could vote it the next time. I, I understand so the timing could be I have another right. suggestion, and okay. I'm just wondering, it, it, okay. it seems like the, the primary concern from, from that I'm hearing so far from this group is, is just an issue with the term museum parcel. Mm -hmm. And I think that maybe even before tomorrow, we could probably even really quickly do a straw vote and just see if there's any sort of consensus among the board about the suggestion to remove the term museum parcel. And that, in fact, could be something that could be used in discussion tomorrow night at the planning board, or excuse me, at the select board to say, you know, X number <coughs> of the planning board actually recommended um, removal of the term museum parcel. Yeah, I don't, from the I don't necessarily disagree. I have a fundamental um, reluctance to, to operate really quickly in response to something, but I don't, I, I was surprised at the museum parcel too. I think it is overly suggested that it's a done deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was previously called the athletics fields parcel, but it wasn't really restricted to athletic fields either. So. Mm -hmm. That was probably uh, that was probably aspirational language in that case as well. Mm -hmm. Any any comments from the other people that have a historical about this? Uh, so the original changing of the, uh, the bylaw of town meeting was for this intent. Like that's what drove this change in the wording to include cultural uses. Like I think it's naive to think anything else. Like the idea was the Marathon Center was going to be there. Like that was the whole plan to change the terminology. So I don't have page or heartburn by, so, by now, now going forward. So the only other point that I've added to that though is that they do have an active um, submission process for potential uses for that. Yeah. And, and I can say that I know of at least one other entity that is considering a proposal for that parcel of land. Mm -hmm. So is it, again, is it leading or overly subjective to suggest that, that a museum is going to go there when they're in an active, open process. And again, not within the jurisdiction of the planning board, but... Right, does it limit, does it limit the agree. options and the possibilities for that person? I agree. Mary or Jane? I don't think I have enough information. I'd like to hear the selectmen's review tomorrow night or whoever is going to present. Okay. Yeah, I do think we need to gather that information, but but the concept of it being the title of a, a section in that agreement or that term being used does lead the question you know, of, of what evaluation they're doing. Frank? Uh, I'm with Muriel about maybe not making it a decision tonight because maybe advice from the town council, as you suggested, might be useful on this. But historically, um, this board in previous incarnations uh, wholeheartedly 
uh, has supported a project on, on, at this location uh, with the aim of it being the Runners Museum, the Marathon Museum, um, a destination why we're doing sidewalks. Every time we talk about sidewalks on that side of Main Street, it's about people walking to the museum. Uh, originally, there was Demons Hockey was behind a big push for this, and different things were going on, but... I think that precedes most of us. I don't, yeah, I don't but, know any of that conversation. But the, the, if the wording is an issue, then sure, let's look into it. But I, I don't have any, really an opinion either way. I think historically, <coughs> it's always been a recreational other use parcel, and that use being earmarked for something like a marathon museum. And um, that's been kind of the core of it. Uh, as far as other bids and other things like that, sure, we should look at the wording and all that, but I, it is what it is right now, so I'm not sure of the timing or... or so, so, so let's do this. I, I'm not hearing a strong, overwhelming consensus to try and do something now, so I, let's just leave it at, you know, there's an opportunity for public input tomorrow at yeah. the select board meeting. Um, yeah. We'll see what they say, and if there's additional information that comes out over the next, prior to the next meeting, then we can certainly um, consider other other options. I actually wanted to leap back to, I think that for a long time, that property had been universally thought of and designated as athletic fields. So it doesn't surprise me that it was in the language that it would mm -hmm. be an athletic field, but I could, you know, I could be wrong on the history, but I think that it has long been, or had long been earmarked for um, athletic fields, and, and that was part of the discussion for access and sidewalks. So anyway. It makes it doesn't now that I think about it, it doesn't strike me as funny that it was athletic fields mm -hmm. previously. Okay. All right. So let's um let's move on to the uh, traffic signal. Um, oh, yes. Um, I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes from um, August. We'll do August twelfth first, so twenty nineteen. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed or abstain? Okay, motion carries. Um, and then I'll also entertain a motion to approve the minutes from August 26, 2019. So moved. Second. Discussion? <laughs> for you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. And that's the job again. Mm. All right. All right, traffic signal. So, um, John, do you want to give us a quick update as to where we stand on this process? Sure, so uh, I think I gave an update last meeting, um, just that I fielded phone calls about it, did some digging, Roy had sent over the plans. Um, so now where we are is uh, the plans have been sent over to us, Beta has taken a quick look at them. We met um, with the uh, police department, me and Beta, John Westerling and um, Dave Del Torrio were not able to meet, but they are, they have seen the plans. Beta is going to prepare a letter, hopefully getting back to us this week. Uh, we will internally circulate it for any other fur further comments, and then we will distribute it to Roy and BHB to move forward on 100% uh, plans. Once those 100% plans are complete, they can put it out to bid, get a contractor to install it, um, and get the process started on actually installing the light. <coughs> So, so when did we actually trigger the point in time for this? So um, it's not super clear, but Phil uh, from Beta had said that he believes we're past the six months. So in abundance of caution, we're asking for the six month uh, extension, or Roy is asking for the six month extension now. Um, so we're already past the six months? Uh, the, the initial six months, yeah, because okay. it's, it's not clear in the decision it says when the determination is made six months from that point and i don't think there's any written determination from beta it's just we discussed it in a meeting was it discussed in a meeting yeah. so we, we can look at the minutes and see but uh, he believes that yeah mr mcdowell come on up thank you actually if you if, if you recall when um beta was suggesting the, the lights were necessary BHB actually didn't agree with them. And if you recall, I said, well, my consultants don't agree, but I'll do it anyway. <clears throat> so we engaged VHB. 
BHB has been working on the plans. They've gotten to, them to a point of 75%, which is very close, but makes no sense to finish them till we get the review from the various departments, beta, DPW, police, etc. Once we get that letter of any critique of the plans, we'll adjust the plans accordingly, get them to 100%, we'll submit them to the town, and we'll put the project out to bid. Now, once we put it out to bid, hopefully we can turn the bid around in 30 days, and once we choose a contractor, we'll stick. The, the real lead time is going to be, it's not the installation. The installation is relatively simple. It's these companies that manufacture these lights <coughs> have a tremendous lead time in production. I mean, that alone could be three or four months. And that's, that's the concern that even if, if I had a approved set of plans today and I put it up to bid today, it's going to take the six months, purely because of the manufacturing lead time. Okay. So, so was it irrational for us to think that this could be done in six months? I think if you followed your process and then I, I think none of us really time. knew. I mean, when I, when I called VHB mm -hmm. and I said, okay, so when I get the planes done, can I get the lights in a month? He laughed at me on the phone and said, Roy, the market is so hot, there's <coughs> so much construction going on around the country. All these companies that manufacture these lights are backlogged four to six to seven months. So it's really, it's really an industry issue. If I may. Yeah, please. Oh, when when did we make the decision? Do you remember what month I, it was? I don't recall. Okay, so um, I'm just concerned that it's taken this long to get 75% plans. And, well, you know, I, that, I can that appreciate that. It, therefore, it's pushed it out that much farther because of a backlog. I appreciate that. So. I will tell you that when we got a proposal from VHB, I'll call three or four, five months ago even, I immediately sent it to, to the planning department and said, and they gave me a complete breakdown schedule of timeline for the drawings yeah. and I submitted that to, to the planning board saying look at if I engage them today which I did yeah. this is their timeline because unfortunately they're like mm. way backed up also and they were the logical firm to do it because they do work for the town they do work for us and they're very good at what they do so it's, it's been a time compression between the designers the fabricators but I will tell you, once the plans are approved, we will put this out to bid immediately, squeeze people in timelines, get the bids back, and once we do, we'll choose a contractor and order things immediately. So, no, no, so I, I just find it in our meeting notes. So it was January 28th that we okay. reviewed this study. And John Westling forwarded me that schedule. It was February 14th. It was so it took us eight months to get to the to, to for VHB to yep. do the plans. Unfortunately, yes. Okay. Okay. I would think once we get the um, comments back, I will push them to probably within three weeks, turn the worst case a month to get them to a hundred percent. And that's just VHB that took that long. Yes. It took them. Yeah. Eight months to design. Unfortunately, yes. for a traffic light. I know it sounds ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It does sound ridiculous. Because yeah. I said the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I said you are kidding me, right? Yeah. Um, so, so when do we expect the beta comments so, back? So uh, we had a meeting last week. They said they can turn around in a week. Um, a week. And if we can send it to internal uh, department heads just to review, so police, DPW, anybody else that might want to review it, um, I would say give them a week to look at it and comment back. Beta did not have that many comments. They said they were pretty close to being done with the plans. Um, so it would be uh, a couple tweaks. I think the one main thing was they have a protected left turn lane onto Legacy Farms North, but no protected left turn lane onto Legacy Farms South. So they would just have, they would have them add that so that there's two protected turn lanes. And that's, that's really the biggest change. Um, okay, so, so, th so there's, there's, so there's road work associated with this. Should I say again? There's road work associated with this? Uh, realigning paving. Just realigning. Yeah. Okay. It was lanes and lines and that type of thing. Just striping. Yes. Yeah. Well, yes and no. Well, we have the, um, the pressed in brick. We're, really gonna take that. We're gonna have to take that out and pave that because it'll become a drive lane. Okay. Why can't you leave it and just paint the stripes as you need? Well, if you if you're okay with that, I'd be happy to do that. I'm not so sure you want it like that. Yeah, I don't want to get into like, the long discussion. The DPW no, back in the day. Comment. So. So, so really quickly, I think I think the the question for us is is whether we are willing to um, extend. Um, 
what's the right term here? Extension of the process for Extension six months. Extension of the process for six months. Thank you, Mary. Mm -hmm. if, if, if I could, I would ask if you could extend it from this date, because this date. realistically, I'm not going to be able to get it done any quicker than that. Yeah. And believe me, if, I, if the material is available today and I had this approved, I'd start it next week, but it's not. And I'm concerned that I don't want to take a false date tell you I can get, make that happen because think what is this is called this October 1st it's got October November December January February I'm going to be into yeah March. no I, I I realize that but at the same point it, the 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 last seven months have been on your watch and are your responsibility I agree and haven't delivered on that so unfortunately because of my architects and my engineers are correct I think now that we're at 75 percent the key thing unfortunately with them is getting to even get the drawings done once we get the drawings done, it's no longer in their purview, it's now in my purview. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we extend for six months. Second. Second. All right. From today. From today. From today. From today. From today. Any further discussion? discussion? I, have, I have a discussion. Yes. Um, well, my concern is, is, is not necessarily just the traffic light. It's that sidewalk along the side. We haven't heard much about that. Oh, I'm no. glad you brought that up. If you've driven by there recently, you probably see a lot of stakes out there. You're talking about the sidewalk going yeah. from. Yeah. yeah. I, I, actually, I'm going to. I know. Let, let, let's not go there just from a timing perspective. Okay. Um, and I think that, that where the, the traffic light is, it's, it's different enough that I don't want to get into details on that. Okay. That's okay. I'll go last. Really? Um, my point was can we put a note on the agenda for. March, I think it's six months from now. <laughs> Whatever six months right. is. Okay, so and that we can you know, just charge. make sure to check in on it. <clears throat> okay, thanks. Or That's you want to put it out to the hundred percent a month from now Well it should be done. Well by well yeah, but but we you know, we don't review the hundred percent plans, do we? It should be going through the town departments. Well, I, yeah. the concern I through the chair, the concern I hear is that lack of progress, right? So yeah, we so check we could check in on it. I mean yeah. we're just suggesting so if you want, if you want, I could send you a report every 60 days on progress. I can send that to John. Okay. So you can see what's going that on. That works for mm -hmm. me. Works for me. Okay. So I have a suggestion. That at the end of our agendas, we have usually business to be considered at any time, including several legacy crimes issues. Could we just add this with, the, that, with that date of March 28th so we just know that it's coming up? And, and maybe we should add the sidewalks there, too. <coughs> I second that idea. Okay. 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 All right, Frank, quickly. My question is um, what the repercussions of a yes vote or a no vote, and that's to John. So that's the uh, complicated part. The, the master plan special permit does not lay out consequences of the non-extension. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm sorry, I, don't, I, I missed that. <laughs> so I they're in the condition that required it be done in six months yeah. and then extended six months if that initial six months couldn't be uh, yeah. enough does not it doesn't provide any recourse if that so so it. in other words granting so this extension public comment <laughs> so, <laughs> makes it easy so so in other words granting that extension has no impact on how we move forward um i mean it could I, you theoretically could say that the master special permit condition is not met and therefore they have to stop work on everything that is Granted under the master plan special permit. Let's not toss that one into the <laughs> yeah, really, I mean, that's, that's really, that's really. Through the chair, let's close this. Okay. Yeah. Well, the so, but, but I understand that the public is concerned and, mm -hmm. and we're concerned and, and we would like to move sprightly towards I, I a agree. successful traffic light there. All right. And so the reason I asked that, it's important. Um, we were just discussing the buses and the issues with uh, getting the, the children safely. The light is a big factor in that uh, for traffic on Long Franklin Road and, and Legacy Farms North uh, and all in that area. Uh, Legacy Farms South, people have a lot of issues with traffic. Um, and the good thing about the 75% plan being reviewed is, as you pointed out, is that it showed that we need that left turn signal from west for or east also right turn for uh, Legacy Farm South. So there's good things that have come of the wait and um, some bad things. Delays is bad. Okay. Um, in the past, this board has given a four month 
window to I'm, some I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it off because we, we have a well, consensus some, to move forward. There's some information that we should consider as a board that you guys maybe don't have that I'm sharing. So I'm just throwing that out there that maybe a four month window might be more effective to get uh, the ball rolling on this project. It's not the Eiffel Tower, it's a no, the problem traffic that is We're not gonna be putting traffic lights in in January and February. Oh, yeah. so, I just heard you say you can't build the, the you can't get the uh, pertinences. It takes three or four months. Three or four months. Yeah. So, so the motion on the table is to grant a six month extension from today. Um, so I think we've heard all the discussion, so call for vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Nay. Any abstain? Okay. Six month extension carries. Thank you. Can we do the other thing as well? I'm up here. Uh, yes, we form, can. Form K. Uh, form K in the restricted land. In the restricted land covenant release. Um, so, John, do you want to talk really quickly on what this is? So, this is a release of a lot A 2 1, which is part of the Northwest Villages. Um, it centers on Aspen Way, I believe. Yes. Um, and it's to release it so that they can. Sell the units. Yeah. And the, can you go over the restricted? Uh, sure. You, you'll see. There's a set of plans to go with each of these, and every time we have a component of land that has a certain amount of restricted land, some of it's open space, some of it's uh, woodlands. It, it varies and shows it on the plan. So we've met the criteria of what percentage of land needs to be done at each closing, and that's what this plan is here. And the form K is acknowledgement of that. <coughs> and signing, excuse me, signing the two <coughs> signing the two restrictive covenants will then get recorded at the registry of deeds. Okay. Um, I don't have any questions on this. I think this is relatively straightforward. But do any of the other planning board members have any comments or questions about this? Excuse me. No. Just a quick question: Is this the first one we've done for Legacy? This North? is about the seventh or eighth. Okay. So then uh, I will entertain a motion to request the described lots and to, uh, let's see, make sure I get this right, to release the lots and to um, endorse the lot release, excuse me, endorse the lot release and the restricted land covenants um, as described um, in the packet. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Kobe, yes. Kobe uh, mentioned is to authorize the chair to sign no. the, ah. restricted the restricted land covenant. So the form K needs majority. Right. Okay. So, as described <laughs> by Kobe, <laughs> I think is there a I accept the amended motion. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any further discussion? A quick yes, discussion. Can I first? Oh, how many units is this? Just sorry? How many units is this that we're I believe it's 74, 76. I'm not exactly sure. Mm -hmm. just, a, just a comment, a question. Do you, just a question for Ray. For, um, where is this located physically? Is it going up like the north? Uh, north? If, if it, actually, easier to think about. If you went up Phipps, to the very end of Phipps, and you look towards the um, gas company at the furthest reach, it's back there. So it's on the western side of the yes. The far furthest western side. Okay, thanks. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Could I give you two updates? Someone asked about the sidewalk. Do you want to speak to that? Very quickly. Okay. So we, is, as you all know, we get approval from the Conservation Commission for the sidewalk. We are engaging a firm to take the guardrail. We actually have the land cleared the whole length just recently. You'll see stakes out there for offsets. We're going to move that guardrail back anywhere from two to three feet. And once we do that, we have engaged a paving firm that's going to come in, scrape it down, raise the grade and gravel, put a berm in, and pave the sidewalk. We're hoping to get that done this fall. The concern is just getting this guardrail company in there. So that's that piece. Quickly in 83 East Main Street, uh, as far as a drop-off area, we had a meeting with the uh, superintendent of schools, DPW, police. John was there, litany of folks were there to look at it. We agreed to, we would do some surface uh, grading. We put a little paved walk over to where the bus stop would be on 
Legacy North. We'll put some barrels out there. We'll put up a couple of signs that says school bus stop. We've agreed to plow it. And so everybody seemed to love the idea. Superintendent of Schools said she sent out a letter to the neighbors requesting comment or input, and I'm waiting to hear back. So I don't know what the status is. And yeah, we discussed it the last yes. time meeting as well, so I think okay. we're... So that's just coming up. Yeah, thank you. Okay. That's it. Can I just All know right. the timing on when you expect to hear back? Did they ask for comments I, by the She committee? didn't tell me. I don't know. <coughs> I wasn't the first school committee here. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, she she, 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 she talked out. Okay. You're right. There was. All right. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. McDowell. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, we're going to move into the public hearings. So at this point, I'll entertain a motion to open the public hearings for tonight, which would be the so moved. second. Second. Let's grab the packet. Three. All right. Mr. Did, yes. Did you want to sign those documents at the end of the meeting? Uh, is that okay? Can we sign them at the end? Uh, the only question is, do we have a notary? No. He's coming back to the meeting. To come back to the meeting? And then someone will have to come in and do a notary thing. Nope. He's coming in. He's not there. Okay, so. So we have to come in and tell him to go office tomorrow. We will have to come in and tell him to go office in the morning to see if it's been signed by someone and notarized as required. Do we have a notary? What the page is? Yeah. Tomorrow, so like we did at one point for a yeah. Town clerk's a notary, I don't yeah. know. Sure we have notaries at town also, I guess if, if it works out, we'll just have people come in and sign it as they can and have it in front of the notary. We have to all sign it with a uh, majority of the board needs to sign the form K and uh, Muriel can sign the restricted lot on the Okay. And I'm sorry, I was talking with my friends down here. When does that have to happen? Are we doing that at the end of this meeting? So there's no notary present today? So to sign the form K. Sadly, I'm a notary. Can somebody else sign? Can he sign this acting chair? Oh. <laughs> so you could sign today? Well, could I can't so, notarize my he's own. Coming, he's going to check in the morning to see if it's all set to go. So yeah, sometimes they bring their own notary. But they so we don't have anything to sign right now? Oh, yes, you do. We, we do. do. Things to sign. We just apparently have two notaries. So, so we, we could sign this. If we have notaries, can we just you can do it sign now, it now? You can do it at the end of the meeting? I don't have my stamp. You don't have stamp. Okay. Do you have your stamp, Muriel? I do, but I can't notarize my own signature. So um, as the acting chair for the meeting, can I sign that? Can, that's, that's a question for a notary. Can, a notary, can somebody who's signing designate a signatory in place of them? Okay, listen, I've had my notary for a week and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to stay right out of that. <laughs> All right, so... The town clerk can do that. Yeah, yeah. I think she has my signature on the books, but I, we'll figure it out. We okay. Figure it out. So not right now. Not right now. So we'll each come to town hall. Yeah, yeah. I always think I want to take the test because right. it makes well, it so yeah. easy. Yeah. There's no test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The forms I agree. Okay. Because yes. I think the form K, they just need. So the notary is only required for both of them. Oh, for both, it is. For both of them, but I think for the form K, as long as the chair can vouch for all the other signatures, the notary just vouches for the chair's signature. Okay. So let's sign at the end of the meeting, if that's okay. Perfect. So please don't leave when we're done. Don't pass out. Okay, so we have an ocean open motion on the table with a second to open the public hearings. Uh, any discussion? Uh, we'll vote to open the meeting. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right. So, uh, commercial photovoltaic solar facility, Zero Wood Street. Um, the applicant is. Yes. Oh. Yes. What's happening? Thank you, John. We have an A and R that we're gonna. Okay. It should be really quick that we're going to sneak okay. in. Just so, the street one. I'm really <laughs> eager to move on to the, the solar facility, but let's let's do the A&R. I might want to just stick around for that as well. Very quickly. <laughs> Come on up. Don't be fresh. <laughs> that was a good line. You can punish me. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, it will probably take me longer to set up the easel, Mr. Chairman, and to do the presentation. So where would just, you like the easel? Just keep talking. Um, the yeah, right there is great. Okay. Well, I, my voice tends to carry. If it's okay, I'll just continue to speak and introduce myself as chairman. That's great. So the board, Wayne Gullick, WDA Design Group, um, here on behalf of Katsun Ju, who's the property owner at uh, 37 Fruit Street. Uh, and Ms. Ju is looking to uh, 
uh, subdivide the, uh, the property through the ANR process, seeking the endorsement uh, of the board, as she has a potential uh, buyer. Uh, oh, 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 good catch. Did that just do what I thought yeah. it did? You know what? Don't worry about the easel. Yeah, yeah just hold well, it up. Yes. Terrific. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I'll play Vanna White, I guess. Um, pretty straightforward, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I will ask one thing. If you can just stand on the other side, and sure. hopefully at least if, at some point the if you can show the television might. screen. Actually, yeah, you or maybe that'll work too. Or if I mix that up. So, <laughs> had a couple of drinks, I guess. That works, thank you. Uh, again, Wayne Bell at WDA Design Group. Uh, the property is uh, located on the west side of Fruit Street along the curb here. JD Sawmill is somewhere across the street uh, from the site. Uh, the property contains a total of just over 200 feet of frontage along Fruit Street. Uh, it contains in, uh, a total of about seven acres, 6.9 acres. And what the proponent is looking to do, like I said, she's got a couple that is looking to buy um, the house lot. They, they, they would like the house and the barn, and she's looking to subdivide this property uh, into uh, a lot here and retain uh, about 5, 5.1 acres uh, of a non-building parcel to the back. So the goal would be, at this point, the couple is interested in the lot in the house at number 37 <coughs> and the arrangement that she's going to have with them or has with them is that at some point should funding become available for the, from them they would look to purchase this piece of here so what i suggested was that in the event that number comes to fruition that she continues to retain this she may want to have an easement uh, across this portion of the property which would allow her in the future to come back before the board uh, to create a subdivision road, pretty much a paper street, to put in a, a driveway, generate frontage for another estate lot in the back. Pretty straightforward. So what we have, what I've done is I've configured uh, this lot so that should that come to fruition, there would be enough frontage along here to create uh, a new lot, 200 foot of frontage, uh, and this would exceed the 60,000 square foot uh, minimum required for any lot. Question. Uh, hang on, really quickly. So, John, any planning so comments on this? It appears that this, if you see these uh, dotted lines near the proposed subdivision lines, this lot was subdivided in 1995, two different owners. Um, the non buildable parcel was conveyed to the buildable parcel, so it became one for zoning. So now they're re subdividing it, basically similar in fashion but a different layout of the property lines. Um, so it does meet the criteria for an ANR. The concern would be, I guess, if it isn't transferring ownership now, um, will that be an issue moving forward that it will be then considered one lot under zoning? Held in common ownership. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. So. Okay. You so know, quick question first, and then a comment. So, are we approving the easement? No. Nope. This or just the subdivision of land? Because my concern is, the way you explained it, you're kind of bypassing our um, our bylaws because you need 200 feet of frontage, and if you put a paper <laughs> street there, that's bypassing. The front it's requirement for the second home. Mr. Actually. Chairman, if I could offer clarification to that. So currently the way the property is configured, we have a 200 foot of frontage here, meets the minimum lot width requirement. So in this district with 200 feet of frontage, it needs 60% of the lot width requirement, which is 120 uh, feet. This has 224 feet with 200 foot of frontage. So the way it's configured, it's no different in terms of what was approved in 1995, as John just made reference, they had a similar configuration. The only difference in the two configurations is what you're seeing here in the left yellow dash line is the configuration of the lot as it was created in 1995. What this does is this makes for a provision that should the remaining property not be conveyed to the, the homeowner, 
Mrs. Jew still has an opportunity to create a, a house lot in here through the subdivision process. What I did explain to her is the subdivision process is not as simple as the a and process. When she goes through the first of all, from an engineering perspective, it's going to cost her more money. The process is a totally different process. It's not simply seeking the endorsement of the planning board, but there's an approval process that goes with it. So I told her, I said, you know, if these folks are uh, can't secure the funding to buy this out back and combine it with this property, that's probably, you know, in terms of that's the easiest way to go. But should they not be able to secure that funding, as I said to her, I would not want, if it were me, this is the way I would do it. Just, you know, again, retaining the rights to potentially site a house on the hand through the subdivision control process. Just a follow up comment to the chair. Just as long as you explain to the owner that we are proposing a paper street that would have to meet town standards for the road. So 20 feet wide, sidewalks, the whole kit and caboodle. So I don't know what the width you have there for that street is. Understood. And Mr. Chairman, what, we had, what I had done there is the road is configured to meet the, uh, the horizontal alignment. As the board's aware, you can, cannot come in at an angle 60 degrees or less. So this is coming in at like 75 degrees. It meets the, the road width requirement for mounting requirements. That's how we have it. Just to so clarify, though, we're not approving a, a paper street or a road today. That's correct. Um, so that's for another, another that's hearing. Correct. What I wanted to do, Mr. Chairman, is just, you know, in terms of the, the lot area itself being larger than what is required at 60,000 square feet, where it's up at 76,000, um, I just wanted to offer some, some explanation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. For clarification, to the chair. So the, for this purpose, the lower line closer to uh, Wood Street is a 1995 line and the, the yellow line is the 2019 line that you're proposing on the ANR. When, for the home audience, it's approved and <coughs> not required. So they're within the town bylaws asking for this. Correct. <coughs> so it's kind of <coughs> Something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Have the neighbors been, a butter's been notified on an ANR? Does that have to happen? I have a feeling that they might want to be involved in some oh. decision like this. Again, when all is said and done, basically what I see happening here is just a change of ownership. You know? At this point? Uh, yes. And not to say that... It, it, As it was in 1995. Right. Same idea. Well, like I said, I was looking out, and I am looking out in the best interest of Ms. Jew, that you know, <coughs> in the event they choose not to buy it, at least she's, she's protected. Last question for me. That area is also pretty wet right around the kind of the back area of that so yeah that's also a concern in yep. the future yeah and it's, it's actually pretty nice in here again if it were me i would have a nice house sitting in here looking out to the weapons it drops off considerably off the edge of the property so it just makes for a great view makes for a great view for a nice house back there and one of the abutters um, one, more one of the abutters is a, a pretty large mansion ranch as to the west of there really okay. yeah all right, Amy. Both, uh, both lots have the required frontage in this scenario? Or I'm sorry? Both lots have the required frontage? Or so no? the way it's set up is there's only one lot that's being created. <coughs> a parcel. So that parcel does not have the required frontage. That's correct. OK. And therefore, it's not a building lot. It's noted on the plan okay. view and in the, the notes above. OK. Any other further questions, comments? All right, so then. Um, no further discussion. I'll entertain a motion to approve this A and R. Is that the right language? It's okay. All right. Are we approving or endorsing? Like, uh, endorsing. 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 Thank yeah, you. Good catch. <laughs> yes. I second the endorsement. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? I'm going to abstain. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. So the mylar itself, uh, is that something that we pick up? Um, yeah, they can sign it right now. Okay. okay. Just the okay. the board is moving. Operating under two. So what do we do historically is a new member, Jane? Oh, yeah, Jane, come on up. Come on, Jane. Of course, talk to me. Oh.
Oh, oh no, they have Sharpies for it. All right, so Borrego, do you guys want to go ahead and set up while they're just signing? Yeah. Looks like you have your own people, so. Um, you know, usually just email us. Do you want? No. Wait, do you want any of the paper copies? No, I can't. Uh, and I can't. So um, we, we are running a little bit behind, um, but we appreciate you being here. Um, I think if we can maybe keep this to about 25 minutes or so, um, and my hope is if you can go through uh, an overview, we have some comments from our staff and engineers, and then um, assuming on where we are time-wise, we'll get into the, um, the outline for the public hearing. Does that sound okay? Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, Brandon Smith, civil engineer with Borrego Engineering. Just a quick background, if everyone recalls, July we submitted the uh, original project layout. We had a site walk sometime in the end of July. We then submitted to the Town Conservation Commission. And so we had some, we've been working with them um, and had a redelineation of wetlands, which changed the layout quite a bit, and some additional site discovery items came up which affected our layout. So we resubmitted, I um, believe it was last Monday with this new layout. Um, you'll notice it's quite a bit smaller than the previous uh, layout. The western portion has been removed and we've enlarged the northern array. Uh, the energy storage equipment is still to the west but um, there's no longer any, any arrays in the riverfront area to the south. We've also pushed out of, uh, there's no tree clearing in wetland buffers. Um, and we, additionally, we have also pushed the array north to satisfy the bylaw um, to make sure that the array is outside of the property line setback there. So all those changes have resulted in the layout you see here and that I submitted on Monday. So I'd be happy to answer any questions on that. Okay. We'll look to John for staff comments. So I had a number of comments. Um, first one appears the uh, solar array meets the requirements of the bylaw. Uh, does have frontage on Mechanic Street, which the applicant has submitted uh, examples of deeds claiming frontage on Mechanic Street. And, our bylaws don't explicitly state that frontage needs to be gained on a public road. Um, so talking to Elaine, that seemed like it's allowed in Hoppington. Um, uh, oh, do you want me to just go through the comments? Go ahead. Okay. So uh, while the array is located on previously disturbed land, areas of clearing that could be minimized further should be investigated. The applicant has not provided anticipated views from Wood Street or adjacent neighbors. Photographs of these views in the current state should be provided at the very least while rendered. Images of what the visual impact of the adjacent homeowners should be contemplated. Uh, the, this is more of a statement. The applicant has presented the plan before the select board as the land is chapter 61, which affords the town the right of first refusal should it be sold. Uh, 
Uh, the select board expressed an interest in purchasing the property should the situation, situation arise as the land is uphill from town wells and abuts the town's Fruit Street property. Um, however, this land will be developed as a solar array. The impact to the well fields and Fruit Street land will be likely limited when compared to other types of development. Uh, the interest expressed by the select board is shared by the Open Space Committee, who has also reviewed this parcel and came to the same conclusion that the town should purchase land if it became available. The applicant has stated that they, they will initiate the process to remove this land from Chapter 61A after the permits have been issued. Um, there's actually an official notification process that has to go through to let the town know. Um, It's not clear as to what the width of Mechanic Street is accessing the site from Wood Street, so clarification that is requested. Confirmation is needed to determine that no work or access to the site will take place on the portion of Mechanic Street that appears to be owned by the adjacent property owner to the west of the site, specifically at the bottleneck of the site on Mechanic Street. There's one point where the parcel kind of narrows a little bit. It looks like it goes a little bit on the adjacent neighbor's property, so just to make sure that there's no work being proposed on that property since it appears that there is there might be some work proposed. Um, again, views from the neighboring properties uh, have, not <clears throat> have not been provided. Views from the neighboring properties in Wood Street have not been provided to prove sufficient shielding for views from these areas. Um, we'd like a status update regarding special permit application of the Board of Appeals for proposed structures in the floodplain district. Provide an overview of the quality and of the existing pavement along Mechanic Street so that the board may make a determination as to whether this pavement needs to be restored. And has there been any confirmation from the fire chief regarding beta comments G8 and G9? So can I just ask one point of clarification? Sure. Um, on the 61A, on the 61, chapter 61 status, mm -hmm. so the town has expressed some interest in buying the land if it became available. Yes. But what the applicant is saying is that they're going to remove it from 61A status um, when the project is complete. So then after permitted. After permitted, permitted thank you. So then what that means is that the town no longer ha would have uh, the... No. No. The town would still have the chance to purchase it, it would just have the special permit. If the special permit is granted, the town would purchase the land with the special permit essentially on it. So the, the interesting factor about all this is that the portions of the land that will be removed from 61A are the portions that are going to be developed. So it could be almost a Swiss cheese effect of land being out of 61A, but then land surrounding it within 61A. So it's, an, it's going to be an interesting uh, discussion to have when that comes to pass. Okay. On, on that, I have a further question, clarification. So uh, I have a question, as you remember, about the Chapter 61A. I was, had the opportunity to meet with the, the town attorney and so forth on that. Um, so there is a process by which um, it is either removed from the 61A rolls if it's bought or sold, or if it is ch the use changes. So in this case, it would be uh, leased. So the use would change, and that would um, that would take it off the rolls. Um, the thing that I recommend we get um, some legal clarity on is how to best protect the town's interest. Because if they notice the town, the, the whole process, the 61A process, hinges on the official noticing to the town. That's when the clock starts and the, and the town has first right of refusal. Um, if this property is permitted, fully permitted for this use, um, the town would then have the opportunity to buy it, but at a much higher price because it's permitted for a different use. So I just think that we need the town, town council's uh, advice on how best to protect the town's best interest in this entire question. Okay. And then if I may, we, one more comment. I got an email from a resident who asked to have their comments uh, brought before the board. It said, is there any tree planting proposed to offset the clearing of the almost eight acres of trees? That is from Nancy Emmerich of the Nine Winter State. Okay. All right. Thanks, John. Um, do we have a representative from Beto, so Stephen, and I forget your last name. Uh, Stephen Borgatti. Borgatti. So Phil, like Muriel, is feeling under the weather today, so he did not. You guys been hanging out? <coughs> no connection. <laughs> 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 All right. So um, Steve, if you can provide us an overview of, of uh, Beta's review of this. Well, I'd say two major comments were made for this project. Um, I'll stand for this first. While John mentioned comments G eight and G nine. 
Those are referring to make sure, making sure there's um, adequate turning radius for fire trucks um, and any <coughs> At this point, we're mainly looking at this northern area, um, making sure a truck going up here could actually turn around since there's no specific turnaround area that might be difficult to try to stop. And also making sure that there's a turnaround area before each gate so that a vehicle that maybe acts up and turn onto the road that can't access the actual array can actually turn around and just stop there. But uh, we're mostly deferring to the fire department at this point to um, see what they think about that, those comments since it's really up to them for emergency operations. Um, the only other major comment that hasn't been addressed is SW, SW34, which is about um, making sure that there's adequate sediment removal from the road. We've recommended that they provide us a shallow swale or some other kind of thing along the western side of the access road. Um, there was some question about if this was necessary since it's, uh, those are existing roads that are just being repurposed for the array. But seeing as there's significant tree clearing taking place, there's resource areas to the west and south of the array, and also the, uh, it's our understanding that they're going to keep part of the site open as a gravel pit. It seems like it's necessary to make sure you have some kind of measure there to make sure sediment isn't flowing off of those roads, um, to make sure that they're actually meeting this uh, standard of the Massachusetts Stormwater Handbook. Um, we'd also add there is a slight increase in runoff from two of the subcatchments on the western and southern side of the array. So having a swale there would provide probably just enough infiltration capacity to make sure we're not seeing an increase in stormwater runoff onto those resource areas. But other than those two comments, most of, most of everything has been resolved. There's a few things we're deferring to the board, a few conditions we're recommending, but for the most part, everything's been addressed. Okay. Thank you. So um, other comments for me? I don't think it was time. Um, so really quick, John, just going back to, to Muriel's commentary, I do want to make, just make sure that we do request some guidance from town council on... Town council has been... Uh, Muriel talked to them, I, I've talked to them, so okay. they're, they're fully aware of this issue and, and uh, I don't know if they're strategizing how to handle it, um, but they're aware and we can yeah. keep them up to date. Okay. Um, yeah, and we would, just, we would just like to know what, what their, you know, what their input is. Um, on the, the, the point that um, Beta just brought up, um, the resource area is the Whitehall Brook. The Whitehall Brook feeds the town aquifer. It's probably, if there is a most important resource area in the town for us to be diligent in protecting to the best, you know, most up to uh, snuff standards, that would be the one I would suggest. So. Uh, from my opinion, from my perspective, we should be as thoughtful and careful as possible um, about that resource area. Um, the other question that I have, a broad question, is um, all the zoning uh, questions in uh, Beta's comments and the, the, the suggestion that they're going to need a, a special permit from the Board of Appeals. I think that um, I think that we need the zoning enforcement officer to give us a read on all of those comments and, uh, and this proposal. So we, we aren't the zoning experts. I'd like to know for sure um, how the zoning enforcement officer is, is reading these proposals. So, John, on the, the outline, where would that fit in on the outline? Is that under intended uses? Yeah. Just so, so anybody in the audience or at home knows, we have a, a, a public hearing outline that we use to go through these. Um, and it's actually where we're gonna go next is to see if there are any topics or anything specific that we want to add to the public hearing outline to make sure that we address it. So I, mean, I, I think Meryl makes, a, makes up a good point. I just wanna make sure that we capture that at the right about time. About the zoning issue? Yes. I think we could either add a new item or we can add it to town department and board committee comments not covered above. All right. Let's add it as a new item on the agenda. Is that okay? I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate that 61A status. 
Yeah, um, definitely. Yes. If that's not on the outline, it needs to be on the outline. 61A status, um, yep. zoning modifications. Are there, I can just read through them really quickly. Um, vehicular and pedestrian traffic flow, truck traffic flow, and emergency vehicle flow, intended uses, stormwater management, site lighting, uh, utilities, specifically water and sewer use. <coughs> Parking lot layout, dumpster location, snow storage, snow removal, noise, HVAC exhaust system, screening of HVAC if applicable, crosswalk locations and sidewalks, building design and landscaping, historic structures if applicable, signage, uh, impacts on schools or other municipal services, value of neighboring residential properties, town department and board committee comments not covered above, additional or, or new comments uh, of information, Sorry, those are the those are the ends of the topics. Historic district needs to weigh into. I know that we've reached out. Yeah. Is that on the list that you said? It is. Then I'm sorry. It is. Thank you. Um, the status of Mechanic Street, in particular. I know that's maybe a subcategory of traffic. What do you mean, status? Uh, how how finished is it? I know in some places this is usability, passability. Yeah. Okay. Or access, maybe we just call that general. Access well, it was like general improvements, I think, right? There was some discussion in Beta's comments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it's, uh, I think the road probably, I, for those of us who drove over it, Rob almost lost the undercarriage <laughs> of his car to it. To it. Um, it's a rich yes. topic of discussion. Yes. Okay, so at this point we'll ask if anybody from the, the audience has any suggested topics. And again, our intent is not to get into debate on this, but it's just a function of whether we want to earmark another point of discussion. And any topics? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, about this, has the abutters been notified? Because uh, people from the far end, say Huckleberry Lane to Wood Street, it's, it's a wide area. Um, I mean, from the, from the north side, there's neighbors that come that abut also yeah. the uh, fruit tree fields. Fruit tree fields. Sure. I would, I'm, okay. I mean, I'm so, need to be notified. I just wouldn't. So, this has been notified in accordance with the state requirements. So, the, it's 300 feet from the uh, lot lines. This is such a large lot. So it, and, it is, and it's very weird shape and they went through so that was one of the reasons that it got withdrawn at first right. so they had submitted and then they withdrew because it was not it didn't include um one of the lots and so now it included both lots that are under it so we were able to find them as well i have one question based on the data comment uh the it's a working quarry you're saying rock pit or it's a, it's a working farm at some point gravel yeah, Good. Clear the chair. Uh, so the, the existing site, the portion, actually, really the portion that. Can, can you show us on the map where yeah. that is? So this portion is a sand, sand and gravel type operation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, kind of in this general area. So there's no tree clearing here proposed here. Are they crushing stone there? Is that? Um, I'm not sure the exact operation. They, when I was there, it's a store question that they were. What's that? I think processing too, right? I think. Yeah. When I was when I drove back there, they they and, were. And that will continue under this same ownership of the property. Correct. Yeah. The, the mm -hmm. solar facility will not impact that area. And Perego is leasing the land from the owner. Correct. And that's triggering the change in the purpose of the land is triggering the sixty one name. So Chapter 61A property um, it comes out of Chapter 61A status if it's sold or, in, or if it's uh, the change in use through like a leasing and so forth. So I guess or a change of use anyway. Um, and there is a point in time where the owner of the property that is experiencing the benefit of the Chapter 61A rights, which is lower taxes to try to keep property in farming or in forestry, um, when it's going to be changing in use. So there's a mechanism either by sale or by, uh, for example, leasing, but it's not clear to me when the applicant is um, mandated to start that notice process. 
just out of curiosity, do you know Thank if, you. if um, stone processing is an allowable use under 61A protection? So I, I asked those questions when we had that meeting um, and I got answers to them and I would hope to not misrepresent them. I presume that if the property where the gravel, where the gravel is being processed mm -hmm. used to be under 61A protection and then changed to the gravel, um, it, it, the appropriate things happened. But I don't remember, to be honest, the, that conversation. The greenhouses back there would still satisfy the 61A, I think is, is how that was. Um, but I think when we were, were doing, having the conversations, um, in that regard it was kind of quick, I think that the property where those other uses were happening were now identified not as 61A property, and I'm presuming that the right things happened when all, if there was a change. But I have not asked for the history on that. And I'll, uh, I'll just want to note that there's also a cell phone tower that's on the property. So I'm assuming that when the cell phone tower, which is a lease, yeah. so similar to what yeah. we're doing here. So I'm not sure how that flowed through the town at that time. I, I don't either. And it, it, it honestly isn't a, a bad question for us to find out how it all transpired. Yeah. So, so I guess my ask then was that we've added 61A status onto the agenda. Um, if we can get some clarity on the history, uh, on the history of it and, and, and how that lot is currently split up. Um, yeah. That would be helpful. And through the chair, just a comment, what I'm hearing about 61A, it sounds like it's not a long-term protection. It's just while the owner is getting the tax benefits, but at any point in time, it could just change. It doesn't sound like it's a long-term protection. And as the solar developer, when we pull a piece of property out of the 61A program, we have to pay <coughs> the landowner. In this case, we would be paying the taxes for the past, I think, five years. I do remember that. Yes. Yeah, so. Yeah. so it the town does <coughs> does benefit. Um, so when the land changes use, the town does get a certain portion of the taxes back. The critical question here for me is um, the town's ability to exercise its right of first refusal to buy it if it really thinks that that <coughs> is necessary or, or uh, important to own in perpetuity. So protecting the town's right in the purchase of town, if they, if they notice the town after the permits, the town is still protected in that regard, we can still buy it with five, right of first refusal. Um, but uh, I'm not sure in the permitting process if we sort of lose some of the, the benefit of holding that right in that the cost goes up. But the, it also may balance out with the tax mm -hmm. scenario too. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay. To the quick process question, do we think we, do we anticipate we want to start on the uh, outline today or we, would that be a different? That's a that's a great um, question, David, because I was just going to ask, and I, I um, you know, we can start to get into the detailed discussion today, which the first one would be the vehicular and pedestrian traffic flow, truck traffic flow, and emergency vehicle access. Just given where we are on the time, I I actually prefer that we wait until the next um, the next uh, the next time you're on the agenda to get into those details. Um, would that be okay with you guys? That's accepted. Yeah, that's fine with us. If it's possible, could the, some of these comments be provided to us in writing so that we can, pro you know, kind of help move the conversation forward and we can provide some some answers to them? Um, well, they do give you a copy of the minutes, right? But the minutes aren't approved. Uh, won't be approved for the next <laughs> meeting. Kobe's good, but seriously. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, we have notes. We, uh, I could submit something based on our conversation here. Yeah. Uh, if, I, if I may clarify, I think he's asking for the comments moving forward, going through the outline. If the board has any comments, they're looking for those to get them before the next meeting so that they can okay. address them before they're discussed. I don't know if that's how the board generally practices that type of uh, interaction. Um, yeah. So, so I would just say from tonight, the big things were, I think, adding some items um, to the outline, um, one being 61A status, one being uh, zoning use, um, what were the ones that we, the road, um, the road condition, 
Um, Which Beta has brought up all of these. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're in front of you. Um, uh, the 61 is perhaps a little bit different, but those are all part of, um, at least mostly part of uh, Beta's letter to us. I remember reading that today when I was reading Beta's letter. Um, the, other, the only other comment that I have, I sent an email to you, John, um, just because of the resource area. I don't think that this is going to be um, in any conflict with anybody, but the beta comment on fertilizer use and herbicide use was a non-issue because you don't intend to use it. But I really, in this case, would like to explicitly put in the conditions that there will be no <coughs> herbicides, pesticides, or fertilizer use just because of the resource area. Okay. Yeah. So that doesn't right. seem to be controversial, which is, I appreciate. Absolutely. Okay. So then we need to continue. Well, and they can meet with the fire chief about the emergency access, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah, actually, I, just a couple of things that we discuss, if I could just mention. I have talked with Chief Slammon about the project we went over. He really only had a couple issues. He wants to make sure that the roadway access is a minimum of 14 feet with two foot clearance on each side. That's perfectly acceptable to, to us. Um, as far as uh, Stephen's comments about the swales, that's, uh, we did originally push back thinking that because these were existing uh, gravel roads that it would be a little overkill, but we're per perfectly happy with adding that in to ensure that there's no runoff potentially, you know, impacting Whitehall Brook. Um, so I just, I just want to get Thank you. those items on the... So, so we'll make sure that the next time we start out right in those detailed discussions and we'll get into fire chiefs and get into all those specific details. Through the chair, can, can we either add pesticides to the agenda or perhaps I can answer a question that I have. Uh, I think that's right? a good idea. Let's, let's add that okay. to the agenda and specifically... Yeah. Um, well, that's the outline. Thank you. Do we want to go over the waiver requests at all to make sure we understand them now or uh, done the time? I'd rather I'd rather wait. Just we've still got a couple more hearings to get through okay. that have uh, that have been before us previously too. And so. just just as we are going to reach out to the zoning enforcement officer, nothing keeps you from doing that proactively, and certainly you'll have their comments to react to. But you can always do that. On your own, you know, substitute first. Definitely, we'll also reach back out to. Because um, it doesn't sound like you've officially received. We did meet with the, um, the Woodville Historic District, but we'll make sure that something in writing, as far as their um, recommendations, is sent to the board. Great, thank you. So, Kobe, what are we looking at for dates? Uh, so October seventh no. has an opening. Mm -hmm. Looks like on October 7th we have Maspinock Woods, uh, the uh, Eversource Pipeline, the um, Tennis Club. That's it. So okay. There's room there, and there's also room on the 28th of October. I assume your preference is October 7th? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Two weeks. 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 So before the Borrego team leaves. Hang on one sec, guys. Yep. Um, it looks like the stormwater management permit needs to be extended. It is currently due October 7th. What's the meeting? I'm sorry? The, what is the meeting date? Like October 7th. 7th. Yeah. So a week, okay. usually we do a week after. A week. So, is that appropriate for you if we extend the deadline to the decision? To the decision. <coughs> oh, okay. oh, sorry, I missed it. So, is it okay if we extend the deadline for the stormwater permit decision yes. to October 14th? Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to extend the, the deadline for the stormwater permit to October 14th. So we'll continue the hearing. Can we continue the hearing? Can we do this at the same time? Yes. Okay. So I'll make the motion to uh, continue the hearing on October 7th and the decision deadline to October 14th. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstain? Okay. Thank you, guys. Want to close the hearing? Oh, we're not closing the hearing. Yeah, we just continued it. Thanks. Yeah. All right, <laughs> Mr. Petrosi. Yeah. All right, here we go. Actually, not, not exactly, but...
<laughs> yeah, we're a little bit behind, but. No problem. So through the chair, um, Mr. Petrosi's decision is due September 30th for the Bumpland Street petition to build a road and for the stormwater management permit. So should this be continued again, we need an extension. Okay. All right. Good evening. How are you? Hello. Not bad. <laughs> So I think we're all pretty familiar with this one. Yes, last um, time last time we were here, we were talking about waivers. Yes. If you remember. So I would love to get to us voting on the specific waivers. Yes. Um, before we get there, I just want to ask you if you have any specific updates to the project um, before we get to voting on those waivers. Um. I, I don't think there's anything specific that's changed since the last time we were here. We've, uh, we're still in front of the Conservation Commission, but their uh, hearings have been continued based on what uh, the planning board is uh, planned, going to end up looking like. So whatever the board decides relative to the waivers, that may change the plan or it may keep the plan the same, in which case we'd have to submit whatever plan that is approved to the commission for review as well. So we've kind of held everything in a balance in, in abeyance since until that okay. happens. Okay. So, uh, so, so then what I'd like to do is go back to the public hearing outline okay. and follow that process. There's a couple of things before we get to waivers. And I'm hoping they'll be quick, but I just want to make sure that we're consistent here. So, if the if you guys look at the public hearing outline on item 5.6 utilities municipal water and sewer underground and overhead utilities and i know we've talked about this but um given that this is a point in the outline i just want to see if there are if you have anything you want to highlight or if there's any questions um, from the board i guess i just want to be explicit that um, i am going to be interested in undergrounding those utilities, particularly behind all those houses, um, and to, to stay consistent with our previous decisions. That's just me. Yep. I, I think uh, I requested a waiver for that, but I'm certainly willing to put the utilities on the ground to the extent that we have the room to do that. I and mean, it's just uh, um, in the utility company will end up <coughs> designing the, the layout of the, of the utilities. We don't get involved in that. Um, but if, if it's the desire of the board that the utilities be on the ground, we'd be happy to accommodate that. Through the chair, I think it might work well, correct if I'm wrong, but as we go through these, just to give the proponent an opportunity to speak to each one before we vote on it? Sure, we're not voting yet. We're just going no, to I know, vote, we'll on. vote on the waiver, so we yeah. want to vote on the waiver. We will. I yes. think it might be good to discuss it right before we vote on it. Yep. Each item. Okay. Uh, as far as sewer and water, uh, <coughs> is, we, we have received a uh, preliminary letter from the DPW to allow us to extend the sewer and water up Buckland Street, uh, subject to, uh, you know, you can't give us approval on any connections to the lots because there's no real lots that have been created at this point. So, um, so he has, we have preliminary approval to extend the sewer and the water. Up Buckland Street. Do, do, have we seen that in writing? Excuse me? Have we seen that in writing? I don't remember that. I'm just I asking. I don't, I don't think I've submitted it to the board. I didn't know if it was necessary, but I certainly can get you a copy of that letter. Yeah, that was hurt. many months ago that that was provided. Okay. Um, is there you have plans for natural gas? or? I don't even know. Is there gas out there? I haven't really uh, gotten to that point. I don't know if there's gas there or not. Okay. It'd be nice, gas is always good for people. Um, and I will say, just for if, if there's any public that have comments here, I'm just gonna see if we can knock through a couple of these really quickly and then we'll um, take any, any public comment. Because that's the same, if that's reasonable. Okay. Um, 5.7 legal issues and um, just to clarify we did um, vote to 
not recognize this in a way in existence in 1953, um, but there is an open item here on right to make improvements. Any comments, questions? Oh, I, I would like clarification perhaps from John um, on what is the status of the legal rights for um, for them to, to make improvements to the, the roadway or the you know the, the proposed roadway. So town council has uh, made a statement. So, um, and this is in the memo on page nine. Uh, it says. It's the same one we've heard before. I'm sorry. It's the same thing we've heard yeah. before, yeah. right? Yes. Mm, okay. But for the home but, audience and, and people. In yeah. Here. Okay. So it's. Uh, I'll just read it. it. says, Town Council agrees that Section 81FF appears to apply to the subject parcel. However, there are two important caveats. First, case law has clearly established that planning boards have the authority to review and impose conditions on the construction of roads and utilities associated with lots protected by Section 81 <coughs> In the past, the Hopkinton Planning Board has re required applicants claiming the Section 81FF exemption to petition for the planning board approval of the roadway and utilities associated with the grandfathered lot. Parentheses, the applicant has now done so consistent with the planning board's past practices. Close parentheses. Second, the chapter 41, section 81 FF exemption would be applicable only to the existing lot on Buckland Street, subdivision of that lot fully subject to the subdivision control law. If the applicant were to obtain approval of this roadway pursuant to chapter 41, section 81 FF endorsement of the ANR plan by the planning board or approval of the definitive subdivision plan would still be required in order to divide the existing lot. Um, and then ownership of Buckland Street. The town council believes that the applicant has made a sufficiently credible claim of ownership rights in Buckland Street for the purpose of ro the roadway petition. Town council notes that an approval by the planning board does not adjudicate property rights and that the abutters may choose to contest the applicant's rights. Any property rights disputes would be private matter between the parties not involving the town. Okay. At this point, is that can we discuss the status or ask for an update on that situation, or is that a? It's not ours to solve. Yeah. So for we an just. Update. Yeah. So 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 the process would be we can approve. Well, we can you know create whatever conditions about the roadway improvement or roadway um, creation that he that he's going to develop, but they would be conditional upon whatever. Um, property rights that property rights could go to court. Yes, yeah, separately. Yes, so something the along those lines. I don't have those property rights. Okay, there was, I, is we, that right? I was been thinking about yeah. it. I was talking to Gary today. It, I feel like it's conditional on proven access at both ends of that road, right? So everything mm -hmm. we're talking about is predicated on the fact that that he, that the applicant is able to access through Pleasant Street. And also, to a certain extent, through Maple Street Extension, which we don't have documented verification of e either. Right. And that's a good right. point. We did request that last time. So we, we did get an agreement from Maple Street owner. I don't remember the name. Yeah. We got the okay. draft agreement. I don't believe it was a signed agreement. No, no, it was. It was signed? Oh, yeah. So that was forwarded previously in a previous meeting. I can send that along again. Okay. Okay. I apologize. Could we do a check? We do something like making our approval dependent on legal status of the access to the to Pleasant Street? I mean, because it just seems like if we approve it, that's then that's going to be used in court that, oh, I'll approve it. That was what I was, I was just saying. Yeah. I think we're yeah. saying the different okay. words. Right. No, it's, it's yeah. fine. I'm kind of stumbling around it yeah. myself. Is conditioning whatever um, approvals we give on actual access yeah. to the parcel through. Yeah, it's just my So I think, um, and I've done this a few times with uh, these paper streets, private ways, the, the board, the application that I have before you currently is just for construction standards of the roadway so that regardless of who owns the access, um, we've got permission to build this road and when we do build it, we'll be building it according to the town standards that the planning board has in place. The issue of uh, rights is something that's currently being litigated um, and the 
outcome of that is, you know, it's up to going to be up to a court or some settlement between the parties as to whether or not uh, um, access is Wall Street owns the access or has access or whether or not the parties on either end of it uh, can preclude access. Uh, I don't want to. I don't think the planning board can make a condition that we prove access because that's something that the private parties have to determine, like, like we've been doing all, at, at the present time. We have litigation um, that's for a declaration. We've actually filed it for a declaration of rights, and um, they've opposed it, and so we're working towards some sort of a settlement of that uh, issue. But this process is kind of independent of that in the sense that the stormwater management regulation is is um, triggered by whether or not we propose to clear one acre or more of land. Um, that's what triggers that threshold. And um, the construction of the right-of-way, uh, the roadway, is something that, you know, we've had prior discussions with town council and the, they advised us to uh, proceed with a petition similar to others that have happened in town to construct the roadway as close as possible to the regulations, the subdivision rules and regulations that you have, and that's what we've tried to do. To, to I, the chair, I would feel more comfortable if we went to our, to our legal counsel as far as whether we have a right to make a defendant or not. I appreciate the input, but mm -hmm. I think we should use our own counsel. Mm -hmm. I understand. I was just going to ask John for if you had any comments <coughs> on the even if it's a, it's something that's feasible to attach a condition of some kind that. <coughs> that's something I have to ask okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's just leave that open for now. Yeah. Um, I do share Dave's concern though that that permitting the roadway within um, provides leverage that we don't necessarily intend or don't intend. I mean that's just not that's also not our functionality. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think we'll make a lot of feel better about our decisions. Yep. So, so, and again, I, I think um, just from a process perspective, my hope is, is that we've got one more item in the outline. Yep. Then I think we can go to the waivers yep. and we'll have a quick discussion and vote on each of the waivers. And then based on the outcome of those waivers, then we can um, evaluate how we move forward from-, from I, I have no objections to you, uh, the board seeking an opinion from town council, uh, you know, I know what the answer is going to be, so I have no problem okay. asking for it. Right. If, if that makes everybody so feel comfortable. I'd like to bring up a point. Um, I, I, uh, I know the course works slow and it's out of your control. And I, it, when I see this on, the, on our agenda, I assume that there's some progress or update on that that uh, will give us some further information. And you don't have it, and it's not your. It's that's how the system works. I understand, but I, without without that feedback, you know, the legal decision, I'm not sure what we should spend time on. Um, well, so may I just say that you know this this is like any other subdivision application that you see come in. People have a right. You can approve the subdivision. People have the right to appeal. If they win their appeal, the subdivision doesn't get built. And it's the same thing in this particular situation. We propose to construct this roadway. If your decision is appealed, or we don't have proof to have access, then- outside of this board, like the, another situation in town where neighbors brought to land court a situation and it took nine or ten year, nine years to resolve outside of our control and we had nothing to do with it um, we just had to wait um, and in this situation I think we have to wait I feel better waiting till that's resolved mm -hmm. but that's just my okay. opinion through the, through the chair just, I think you made a statement because every other development that we approve in this town, the access to the roadway is owned by the developer. That's not the case for this one. All I'm trying to point out is that uh, an approval by this 
board doesn't necessarily always mean that the subdivision will get built the way you've approved it. It's appealable. Parties have an opportunity to, to work out their differences under an appeal through a court process. It doesn't involve the planning board in that process. So um, I'm not talking about access, I'm just talking in generalities about what the planning board would generally do with an approval. And people can disagree um, on how the approval and what the conditions are. And those conditions get arbitrated in a legal process. So that's what this is going to happen. So I just want to say, I mean, I mean, to me, I think it's really important to state that one of the things that, that I'm concerned about, and I'm just echoing some of the things that have been said, is that we want to make sure that any decision this board makes um, is is not used as a basis sure. for something in the courts with regards to access to the land. And I, I, don't, yeah, know, I don't know what's allowed, I'm not an attorney, so I don't know yeah. what, what's allowable there and what's not, but I just want to make sure that we're crystal clear yeah. that, that <coughs> however this moves forward, that that, that that isn't used as a basis for the, I, I, the that, kind, that kind of a condition I have no objection to. Okay. All right. So, <coughs> Last item on the public hearing outline, historic preservation, specifically stone walls. So I believe there are some stone walls on that property. Um, there are, mostly at ground level. What would you like to do with them? Where, where, else, where else would a stone wall be? <laughs> Just up on the utility pole? I'm just saying. <laughs> are we happy to give Yes, we are talking about the stone walls at ground level. Okay. Yeah, so through the chair, there are some of the things where they are they where the road would go? Where are these stone walls? The stone walls are generally um, form the outline of the of the right of way. Um, and the uh, in, in this particular location, the stone wall on the northerly side is going to remain in place. Um, we're actually grading down towards that stone wall. One of the waivers that we have is that we grade within the right of way. So that this stone wall is not being disturbed. Um, this stone wall on this side here um, is, it's not really, I wouldn't call it a stone wall per se. It's, it's, a, it's a bunch of rocks lined up. But they're not, it's not a wall, you know, to, that you would use as a, as a, to retain anything or to mark anything. Yeah, it's just okay. a boundary of the, of the right of way. And in which case, um, you know, this actually gets filled in. I'm sure the wall will be removed through construction. But that's, yeah, All right. I don't think that's... And I mean, in fairness, I mean, this isn't a historic district. It's right. not a scenic roadway. It's, these no, are, I don't I'm think not, it's... I'm not sure it's over the road. So, okay. So, um, before we get to the waiver request, I just want to take a moment to see if there's any other public input on these detailed discussion topics. So, if anybody from the public wants to come forward, we do need you to speak into the mic. Come on up. Uh, and the first one. Just, yeah. just from a process perspective, make sure to state your name and address. And I, I do ask that you try to keep your comments yep. brief. My name is Mike Graham. I live at 3 Maple Street Extension. I have two things I'd like to get clarified. One is I'm not sure whether Maple Street Extension is public or private. I believe it's private. And that has some implications for some of the property owners along the street. Second thing is, if you've ever been down that street, you can recognize pretty clearly that it's very substandard. So what do we do about that if we're going to be accessing that road via this project? Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? I'm Linda Conley, 56 Pleasant Street. I'm, a, uh, I'm in a butter and just commenting on the wall because I've seen that wall. It, um, it is a wall. It's a farmer's wall. Um, you know, it is crude, but I would consider 
a wall that's been there for a long time was a division or a pathway for farmers to, to cut through to the fields that were out there. That's my understanding of what it is. Just to add to that, thanks. Could I? Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Amy. Well, could we ask her to clarify? She'd prefer oh. that the well be preserved. In go ahead. You prefer that the well be preserved on that side? Oh, absolutely. Okay. So we could consider adding that as a condition. Okay. okay. Are, there, are there walls on both sides of that roadway? So the, the one that we wouldn't be able to preserve the and construct the roadway, is that correct? I don't think so. I think we can, on the northerly side, on the Conley side, that's our plan to keep that wall in place. The wall on the southerly side, with all of the stormwater management um, basins that were swales that were constructing there, I, th I think the wall will be eliminated. Through the chair, can we make a, uh, a provision that they take the rocks from the south wall and add them to the north wall? Does that make sense? Or? Let's do this. Let's uh, let's get to the waivers. Yeah. Let's the waivers. And depending on how that goes, um, then we can discuss potential conditions sure. um, that we would want to attach to consideration. That's fine. Right. Sound okay? And when we will, we can preserve the stones and add them, certainly for the, that side. Okay. Okay. All right, so let's go through the waivers. Um, and I'm reading from page nine of the memo. Um, and, and as uh, David recommended, we'll give you a chance to make a quick, uh, quick comment on those. So the first one would be um, environmental analysis. Well, may I um, just remember that I think at the last meeting, the, not the last meeting, but the meeting second to last that the board actually got through um, three or four of these waivers in the la and we were on uh, the berm and sidewalks, if I remember correctly, that uh, the board did vote um, the first three or four of these waivers approved them. So can I, can I just jump in here? The notes that I have um, have a slightly longer list of waivers, um, and we did get through the first three of that slightly longer list. Does anybody remember that? Well, is I think we're going through some of the waivers. So, um, so I had section 5.4, um, we voted yes um, on, on environmental analysis. The traffic impact on 5.4, uh, the traffic impact report, we voted yes to grant that. And then this is where these notes slightly diverge. Um, I have section 8.2.1G, property lines, pavement rounding at street intersections. Yes, well I'm just, actually what I'm trying to make sure is that we all have the most current list that we're yeah, the, I, I hear John Madley clicking over there. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where that is. I have uh, the revised Maybe list that I gave uh, submitted to the board is dated July 7th. That's what I have in right. the paper. I may have copied yeah. over the wrong one. So that's, that's, the, that's the revised list that we provided um, following a previous meeting where the board asked me to. Uh, but I have copies of Would you folks like to? Yep. July 7th. I have a few copies. Thank you. Share? Oh, yeah, we can share. There you go. Dave, do you want Yeah. I um, All right. What I'm not clear on, and I apologize for this, is in my. Um, in 8.2.1G property lines pavement, I just have some notes written down, so I don't know if, I, if we had any conditions to that approval or not, to be honest with you. I guess we would just have, we have voted it, so we just have to go back in the record and yeah, find out fair. what we voted, because it's been voted. Okay. So then the next one is the 8.2.2.A, granite curbing. All right, so, so let's, let's uh, start there. So the granite curbing typically would be uh, on the roundings of uh, 
intersections of the streets, typically. Uh, I don't know, do you folks require granite curbing on the on the roadway itself or no? I'm not quite sure what in terms of it, but our basis is that we'd like to keep this as a rural uh, country road layout. Uh, <coughs> minimal payment and it's essentially I think in your regulations you have some parameters for a 20-foot um, right out paved way that is designed in this way serving you know only four houses okay. you know, the basis for that waiver um, so the standard we're referring to just for clarity you're suggesting is just at the at the road intersections at the curbing, or are we talking about the entire length of the road you intend to put in? That's what I thought about. So this 8.2.2a is granite curbs shall be required along all edges of pavement with radii of less than 100 feet. So that would be at the roundings of the roadways, where the radii would be of 40 feet or 20 feet or so we're asking for a, a waiver of that requirement. Through, through the chair, I think we normally ask the development to put in um, asphalt berms throughout and not through granite. I don't recall any granite for previous development. Pleasant Street. I feel comfortable with that yeah. granite waiver. But we're talking about Pleasant Street, the way the intersection is. It's where it starts with the radius and then the rounded curve. curve. So I mean, we don't, every but development then, we connect the streets, it's all. That's well yeah. I would, uh, I'm okay with this waiver. That, that side of the street also doesn't currently have well, any curbing either. Speak on Pleasant specific, Street. I'm well, speaking specifically to Granite, Frank, and not other yes. types of curbing. Yep, understood. Um, so that was 8.2.2a. That's what that uh, is just basically on the roundings to waive the requirement. Yep. Understood. Um, do you want to go to the next one? Or do you want to no. vote the uh, No. We're going to vote on that, but really quickly, any comments from the public? Granite Kirby? Okay. So then I will entertain a motion to grant a waiver pursuant to section 8.2.2A, um, Granite Kirby. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, discussion. One, one discussion point. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel really odd voting any of this list not knowing if there's going to be property rights uh, connected to Maple Street. Like, it just seems so, like, ill-advised. I don't know how else to put it. I agree. So, I think the, I, don't, I don't know the answer to what to do. Either. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think we all, I, I struggle with that as well. Um, I think that the guidance that, that I've heard is that we should review this independent of those because Litigation is done in a court and, and, and not not here. And even so, I, I understand the uncomfortableness, but I think we can move forward with this. And we still have another option for our final approval if we really feel uncomfortable. Yeah. We haven't got enough questions answered at that point. So I think so. You're just part, part of the part of the intent here is to give some direction to the to the developer as well. We're not by 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 choosing to grant these waivers, we are not approving the development. We're just acknowledging that we're, that we're going to, to grant these specific waivers. Okay. So, Chair, I have a clarification. Um, Rob and Frank are not eligible to vote on these because you've missed two meetings. And Jane, okay. Jane. Frank missed two meetings and Rob, and Rob is the new member. Right, so Rob, yeah, yeah Rob, you were here for when it opened, and Jane as well. Jane, Rob, Jane, so, and Frank missed two meetings. Yes. Wow. But they can comment. Just they can comment. They can absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So there's six okay. members voting, and they need all. We need all six. Simple majority. Mm -hmm. so okay. Thank you. Okay. So my comment about the Kirby. Uh, in particular, I don't think this should be waived. Um, if this were to be built, uh, if, when it's settled, and that was a decision, uh, then I would prefer that we keep the Kirby because it's an improvement. Uh, just because it's not there now, it's, it is a requirement. I don't want to waive that requirement. Uh, I think that the angle of the turn from 
the north side uh, would uh, be safer with uh, actual granite curbing, uh, and I think it'll be clearer definition where it is very much would look like I'm assuming a driveway that's an actual street if it were to be a natural street and then an actual granite curbing makes it look like a natural street. Okay. So, so sorry. I had another thought. Like the, I guess I was thinking more that the curbing, if this were to be approved by the courts, that the curbing would be more intrusive to the neighbors because it's already so very close to their properties. And I don't think there's granite on Pleasant. But I would be curious to hear from the neighbors on that. Yeah. So I think the we asked from the neighbors didn't have any comments on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I would, I, I would agree. There's not granite on that side of Pleasant Street. On the other side, um, I think there, there might be because there's a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. To the chair, just what my observation is down. Uh, I may be slightly off, but I, I don't think outside of the town center that there's any granite curbing for the most part. This is all the town. All. This is the town center. Main Street was considered the town center, but I think even throughout all those side streets from the town center, there's no granite. There's just uh, all right. So let's vote. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. All right. So the next waiver is 8.2.2C, same section, which. Um, we um, asked for a waiver. This is for Cape Cod berm on uh, edges of pavement where radii are greater than 100 feet. So all of these, this curbing is really all on turns, not on straightaways. The way I Just the granite curbing is on the curves. Yeah, well, this is. Cape Cod berming is on the Radii are greater, greater than 100 places. feet. What is, yes. I, I don't even know what that means. So it's straight, and that's. Okay. Greater than 100 feet. Okay, so on the straight. So I, I, I think the intent is that on a curve, the, the granite curving gives some protection for right. that curve, and then plow drivers like to hit it. And then and then we're not going to require it on the straight pieces because we're not as concerned about protecting that 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 radius. So I think we had a little brief discussion on this about if if I had to you know right now we have a 20 foot wide paved width in order to put Cape Cod berm we'd have to. Um, extend the width of the pavement a foot on each side so we'd end up with a 22 foot wide paved width. Um, I did speak to our engineers about adding a what they would call a monolithic berm to the edges on the northerly side of the roadway because the way the drainage is set up, <coughs> the drainage is rolling off of the roadway into the swales, the drainage swales and a berm there would keep the water from draining in that direction. So that's the way the road. On the south side, right? As well as on the south side, right? Based, based on how your stormwater management is Correct. Going, Correct. Yeah. So a berm on the southerly side would be um, hurtful to the way we've designed the drainage. Um, it's possible to do, without increasing the paved width, to do a monolithic berm, which would be incorporated into the pavement, sort of like a uh, just the way the machine paved the roadway, it creates a berm, but it's still within the 20 foot paved area. So we, we can do that, or if the wood wants us to add another foot of pavement, uh, we could do that. Okay. Comments or questions from the board? To the chair, I think we talked about this in the past, and I was comfortable with a uh, berm on the northern because that's because of the drainage as well. Okay. And I would agree that, but, but I have a technical question. The Cape Cod berm is that asphalt, you know? Yes. Yeah, it's part of the pavement, right? So. Um, just so you a monolithic berm is you're paving, but they sort of <coughs> lift the edges so it's incorporated within the 20 feet of pavement. Right. If you do a Cape Cod berm, you have to put the binder down and then you have to pave a foot wider to create a foot of base for the Cape Cod berm to go on. So it's an extra foot of pavement, okay. just so you know. Just. I have no problem with an extra foot of pavement, but <laughs> I just, um, I'm, I'm saying that, that what <coughs> I would like to see a curb on that northern side. 
Sure. We can and whatever you prefer. I guess. Should there be a curb on the southern side until it gets to the That's what I was just houses. gonna follow up because yeah. my mind that it might aesthetically be better and between the two houses to have matching curbs, right? The two existing houses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On Pleasant Street. No. no. Yeah. Between yeah. between oh. the two sixty the right and sixty two. Yeah, I was between the two houses. Yes. Yeah, yeah those, are on, those houses are on Pleasant Street. Oh, yes. the houses are on Pleasant Street. But yes, that's what I meant. Yes, I get you. Yes, 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 sorry. No, so, no. So, so, personally, I, I prefer Cape Cod Gardens on both sides, and part of that's because there's houses there, and, and just as someone that likes to keep a very nice lawn, all the residual from the road, all I mean, that's all just going to yeah. wash into that area there. The beginning of the section or the entire road? I'm not sure I, I prefer the entire so section. So, it would affect the drainage, that's the problem. Well, I don't think it's a very good drainage plan. Right, it could be fire. Um, so we're it's low right. impact design. I mean, that's what is uh, understood. We, we desirable. Be, yeah. Well, it doesn't have to be lit. We could require um, catch basins yep. with underground drainage. All right. So, any other comments before we vote? So, can I just, for clarity's sake? Um, if we were to vote uh, not to uh, not to waive the requirement for the berm, right? Is that what we're doing? There is a requirement for berm on both sides. Correct. Okay, um, that would necessarily. So this is the road construction that would necessarily impact the stormwater plan. I believe it would. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I was clear on that. Okay. All right, so um, I will entertain a motion to grant a waiver pursuant to section 8.2.2.C regarding modified Cape Cod berms. Mr. Chen, can I, maybe I should modify the waiver based on the discussion that I've heard that we are only asking for that waiver on the southerly side of the roadway instead of the both sides. Okay. So that way... I think what I'm hearing is the northerly side seems to be more of concern and should be included. All right, so just to clarify, I'll entertain a motion to grant a waiver pursuant to section 8.2.2.C, specifically with regards to the southern edge of the roadway. So moved. Second. All right, discussion? Yes. Yes. So. I guess I would ask the proponent, is he willing to curb between the two houses and then stop the curbing on the south side? Because I, I heard some positive input to that, that, you know, for the first whatever. We, we'd be willing to do that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Sure. So just to clarify then that the waiver would only be... Where the drainage is. Where the drainage is. On uh, the frontage of heading, our Heading west. Uh, from the first property line. Right. Okay. I think that's a good compromise because we push back on the catch basins and the underground drainage and we get some curbing where appropriate. Okay. Uh, sure, I'm, nice I'm not inclined to grant this way around this being up front. Okay. All right, all those in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? No. 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 Any abstain? Okay. Could you show your hands again? Right. The eyes. Two, four, two, four. Dave and Mary were in favor. And no. And was no. Four again. Thank you. Okay, section 8.2.3a, width of street right of way. Less than 40 feet, uh, existing variable width right of way. The um, 8.2.3 deals with the various right-of-ways that you've uh, established in town for paved widths. And because this is a roadway that's only going to serve four houses, and not um, to be extended for any further development, we requested a 20-foot pavement width, which is classified in the rural section of 8.2.3C which is the next waiver. So these two go hand in hand, 8.2.3a, and we only have uh, a variable width of 30 feet roughly of 
right of way to deal with there. Okay. Comments or questions from the board? Is he asking for the waiver for the uh, entire length or of the road or just within the section of the existing houses? The entire roadway. It's 20 feet of pavement from Pleasant Street to the end. But the right of way, once you get onto your property, is the right of way would be wider, correct? It's, um, it's just, if you can see it's how it, it varies, it uh, varies. You know, it's a little wider here, it's a little narrower here. So it's, you start one way, but you'll end up in okay. the end. So if, even with regards to your own property, the right of way is still less than 40 feet. Oh yeah, yeah, it's probably 33, 33 feet at the max. 33 feet at the, the max. The existing path roadway, right? Right. He can create a road on his own property. What he's saying is on his own plan, the right of way is a maximum of 33 feet wide. 30 or 20? He just said, it's not, not the road, the right of way. The right of way. Uh, yes. He's saying he's saying that that in the very widest it's thirty feet. What here what you're creating, what you're gonna maintain, and then at the very narrowest of your own property it's gonna be twenty. Well no, it's narrowest down to maybe twenty eight feet in this area here, but so when you end up with a twenty foot wide pavement of continuous pavement, you're gonna have very little room down at the end versus maybe three or four feet on down at the beginning. So just to clarify, the road is 20 feet wide all the way through, paved but the width, right of way. The paved width is 20 feet all the way through. The proposed the road, right? Yeah. Yes. The right of way is variable yeah. from like 33 feet down to like 28 feet. Okay. Yes. Could a chair have a few words? I'm just, I'm struggling with the right of way. I mean, you own this property right. and you're proposing a road and I'm, I'm confused with the right of way conversation because you can establish the right of way with your proposed road. Well, are, you, are you suggesting widening it? No. I'm suggesting you put in a road that means subdivision design, yeah. Well, if, if we uh, get to that point and I'm required to file a subdivision plan to build lots, then we probably might end up with that discussion. But um, right now, we're, we have a pre-existing right-of-way that we would like to construct. I think we have the right to construct in this in little general laws, and so that's why we're here. So, if if the board determines that, uh, or the courts determine that there's isn't a way in an existence, then we're not entitled to A and R endorsement, and we have to come back for subdivision approval. Then perhaps that might become an issue. But so I, I'm just going to be very clear. From my perspective, our, we have gotten direction from the earliest stages in this application process that we are entitled and, and historically do require new roads to be built to the subdivision standards. So that's where my votes are going. Well, I don't want to necessarily disagree with you, but um, I do. Um, I'm the the uh, I think the town council's opinion is that you can apply the um, subdivision rules and regulations to the maximum extent practical. Those are quote unquote from the town council. And if you take a look at uh, you know keep you know there's another subdivision there's another development right across the road on Lemon Street that you apply these very same regulations and grant these very same waivers. Um, and we'd like to be treated accordingly. Across the street on Leonard Street, you Yeah, said? Box Mill Lane, mm -hmm. to be specific. So, um, Was that prior to the town meeting the 40B quota, though? Excuse me? Was that prior to the town meeting the 40B quota? No, that no, was after? that was 2016, 17, and 18. So, um, in fact, this application is almost identical to their application because the town planner at the time gave us, and town council, gave us that package to follow to make this application. So I don't want to reinvent the wheel, but this is what the town planning boards 
have done here in Hopkinton for the last three or four years. So, and these are the waivers that they asked for. So, through the chair, can just a point of clarity, a couple of points of clarity in my point of view. First of all, I think that the right of way discussion on his property is irrelevant because he has complete control over that. So it's just a question of how wide he wants to build the street. Um, my second point is he's absolutely correct with Box Mill that um, the standard wasn't followed there, but that's not true for all the other developments that I can think of. There may be a couple, just a handful, but um, that's not our normal standard operating procedure. Well, damn that planning work for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's probably not. Right. No, no. <laughs> I wasn't. Okay. Just my opinion. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other comments before we? Yes, Frank. Box Mill Road is a different circumstance altogether. We talked about wetlands, and uh, there's no question about access <coughs> from Leonard Street to Box Mill Road. Um, there were issues, and the board worked with uh, the neighbors, and there was some legal action, and it worked out that they worked, they resolved things. Um, in that way, it's similar. Uh, so, I'm urging my fellow board members to uh, vote no on, on this waiver. I think it's uh, putting the cart before the horse at this point in the process, and I fully endorse uh, Mira, <coughs> Mira's point that she made. All right, so any further discussion? The only other comment uh, I want to make is there is a, a different landowner to the west that's come before the board in previous meetings and basically stating their case that they own that land and about stormwater runoff and concerns. And it's impossible to predict the future, but allowing a road that doesn't meet the standards would make it even more difficult for that landowner to gain access in the future. Mr. Chairman, may I just ask, so, so we're dealing with your regulations. I'll just ask the board then. So what category would you call this road? So here are your categories. You have type of street, you have major, pavement with 24 feet, minor, 22 feet, Rural, 20 feet. Non-residential, 30 feet. What category would you put this roadway in? The other board, make the decision. We'll do whatever you want. Less pavement means less runoff, less water, less, less impact. More pavement, more water, more runoff, more impact. <laughs> Can I make the decision? I understand. I'm assuming it's rural. Point of clarification. Yes. That's not the waiver being discussed. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Wait, I didn't hear that. It's not the waiver being discussed. The waiver is related to the right of way. Fine, but then you have to tell me what category, if you deny the waiver, what category do I then fall in? Fall in? John, do you have guidance on that? So, I, I don't know if we're on the same page. So the waiver that's before the board right now is for the right of way of 40 feet, not for the paved width. But that's the next waiver. It so is, talking that's about. not what the board has been discussing. Okay, so... And I just want this completely separate. I, I don't even know. I understand. I know. I've waited two months for this meeting, so I want to try and get what I can get. Yep. It, what is the standard width of a subdivision road? 40 feet. Of a road or of a right, right of way? Road. The road, um, I mean, it's depending on what it is. If it's a major subdivision, minor subdivision, it's 24, 22, or 20. Okay, so I would think we could agree this is a minor subdivision. Mm -hmm. So it would be 24? 20. If it's, so so it's, 22 if it's a minor. major subdivision road, it's 24. If it's a minor, it's 22. If it's a rural, it's 20. 20. But we're talking pavement. about the pavement, not the pavement, right of not the right Which is the next one. I got you. Yeah, I got yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. So the standard right of way for all roads is 40 feet. Okay. And then the paved width changes. So we're only talking about the right of way here. Right. So, so I'm going to entertain. A motion to grant a waiver pursuant to section 8.2.3a, the width of street right of way. I actually think That's we already, already moved and seconded when we were discussing. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, You're right. Yeah. Nope. The motion's right. We're in discussion. That's right. So at this point, then let's go ahead and vote. All those in favor of granting the waiver? Say aye. Opposed? No. Yeah. No. So, so Point of clarification. So you're asking, you, even though we only have a 33 foot right of way, you're asking me to do 40 feet. Is that what you're saying? That's what our subdivision bylaw calls for. Okay. 40 feet, 40 foot right of way. Through the chair. Why do you only have a 33 foot right of way? 
where you own the other seven feet of your property. That's the right of way. We're not. Okay. I'm not going to get into the, I'm not going to get into the legalities yeah, okay. of what you're doing. So the statute is pretty clear. We have a right to build this under Mass General Law. So whether or not you folks want us to build it according to your standards, or whether or not we're going to build it according to our standards, we're trying to work with your board, with the board. But you know, and we're asking you to build it to our standards. Right, but through the chair, uh, the clarity is that. He's assuming that he has the right of way, existing right of way, which is 30 feet feet, and we're doing our subdivision regulations, which assumes you have on all the property and you can create your own right of way at 40 feet. So that's the discrepancy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think do you want to want continue on the waivers? Yeah, well, let's, let's keep going. Let's, okay. let's go to type pavement width. 8.2.3C. Yeah. Type of street pavement width. Rule 40 feet for pavement width. Excuse me? 40? No. Oh, no. 20, sorry. 20. He's still thinking right away. No, 20 feet. Yeah. Any comments? I, I, I'm just, I basically explained our position. You, you have in your regulations the, the defined roadways based on the nature of the subdivision. You have major pavement with 24 feet, minor 22 feet, rural 20 feet, non-residential 30 feet. What is this? And you're proposing a 20 foot Correct. pavement, right? Which would be in line with rural, which Correct. is to your previous question: is is this a rural, <coughs> rural roadway or is it a right. minor? So point of order, I don't, I don't think this is correct. I'm on time. <coughs> this is not a waiver. This is a designate. We could just designate it as rural. And correct. Then the I, if I may, I don't believe this is a waiver. This is more of a request for a determination by the planning board. Mm. Right. Okay. All right, so I'm going to entertain a motion to Designate. determine or to designate this as a rural roadway, which would have a requirement of 20 foot wide pavement. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Discussion point. <laughs> yes. Does, I feel like we're setting a designated a rural road and not a subdivision road. I think is it just feels to me like it could cause us. A, could cause uh, mis misidentify the four houses being built or proposed. Okay. Mary? Um, I think 22 feet minor subdivision would be more appropriate for this um, because of its location in the town. Not, it's really not rural <clears throat> anymore. <laughs> it's probably farmland a long time ago. Um, and my question, you know, clarification more than anything is um, with the pavement, does that refer to the roadway with, with the pavement? Um, doesn't include the curbing and any sidewalks or anything like that. What, how does that work, John? So it's the minimum width of the traveled way. Okay. Is how it's defined. And I, if I can okay, clarify the point sense. on the rural versus major versus minor. Those are actually defined terms in the subdivision regulations. That's so, great. <laughs> um, major street is a street which carries or anticipated carry traffic equivalent to that generated by 50 dwelling units or more. A minor street is uh, traffic equivalent to that generated by more than 10 but fewer than 50 dwelling mm -hmm. units. And a rural street is a street which carries or is anticipated to carry traffic equivalent to that generated by 10 or fewer dwelling units and is not capable of extension. So I'll keep my motion as it stands. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how good it was. But yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Quickly. Very quickly. Yes, yes. Uh, I think with the connection to Maple Street extension, uh, that would be a good fit with 20 feet. I believe the cheapest uh, registered 20 feet would be his minimum requirement. Um, so, uh, okay. <coughs> so we'll, yes. All right. Thank All you. those in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay, so we just need this as a rule. My grandmother's phone. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a, that was approved. Yes. yes. So the waiver was not approved. It's not a waiver. It's a designation. It's a designation. It's a designation. Okay. <laughs> yes. So what did you ask for? So thank you. I don't want to um, leave the point, but it is ten o'clock, and we do have two other items on the agenda, and I don't know how late we're allowed to be in here. I I believe it's around ten thirty. Are you looking at me? Because I, I, I have a clue. Yeah. I, I don't. 
I don't know how late we can stay. Nope. Town, town, yeah. town buildings are, are well, supposed I'll, to close at 10. I'll yield my time because uh, my fellow engineer is sitting behind me, so I want to give her a time. I'll be happy to come back. Okay. I like it here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. So then we need to continue the hearing and we need to extend the deadline. But, but I, I'd like to come back at the next meeting, not like two months from now. So uh, the next meeting again, October 7th. We have, we have Maspinock, we have uh, the Eversource Pipeline, we have the Tennis Club, we have Wood Street. That's all. So <laughs> that's all. I would like to propose um, that we start at 7 mm -hmm. and that we, we put our attentions to this public hearing first um, and then parcel out our time accordingly past that. I agree. I agree. I just agree. pressure in mind right now. Okay. All right. So, um, I'll entertain a motion to continue this hearing to October 7th, and which would extend the decision. decision to October 14th. Sure. So moved. Second. Discussion? Um, we can't be meeting earlier. If you were worried about people meet, missing meetings, like myself, are coming late. I know I can't vote on this, so you can meet at seven and nothing will be lost. Yeah. But in general, we should be thinking about keeping to our schedule seven thirty to ten, and um, doing what we can. Uh, which we have our new schedule process. It's working better, um, but meeting earlier in general is not really a good idea for me personally. But I know I appreciate okay. that, Frank. Okay. Unfortunately, and, and we I we do account for that that input. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, just a point of clarification, did you agree to the extension of the decision? Of course I did. I just made sure it's adjusted. Nay. Nay. We'll, we'll do that again. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Any abstentions? Decision October 7th. My October 7th, 7 p.m. Yeah, and we're going to start with it. All right. Thank you guys for your patience. Interesting to listen to. <laughs> we'll be back. Uh, you know, <laughs> meetings to come. Okay, where are you? So, good evening. Hi. Hello. Uh, Jason GLM Engineering, and we are back with a continued public hearing for the Chesmo. Uh, are there, any, are there any differences between this yes. and oh, then what was sent? What was sent? What was sent minor, just minor differences um, that I will get past. Them. Just minor things if I, that. If I could just interject, I know that the timbre of your voice is very um, quiet, and the folks at home are gonna. If you, I just encourage you to speak up. We want you to yell at us. No, I can. Thank you. Dave's I don't need to put another. Okay, and, and sorry, just before you begin, just it is 10 07. I'm gonna go quick. Um, okay, so I'm gonna say we've literally got till 10 30, and that's a hard stop. Do we have anyone else after this? Um, we do have one more. So, since the last meeting, we met with uh, the fire chief because that was one of the big comments that came through. Yeah. Yeah. What we did uh, to address his concerns. Uh, was we widened the entrance off of poles to 24 feet. I've highlighted it in yellow just to point out the areas where the pavement will be widened. It's not grass, we've actually decided to just go with straight pavement. We eliminated some of the stacked parking so that it would be possible for a fire truck to pull in its full width and have an area to stage in over here. Over on the front side, one of our entrances was already approximately 32 feet wide. This turn in the circle, circular turnaround, uh, we widened both areas. This one's at 24 feet. Uh, the fire chief suggested that his minimum width would be 20 feet. <coughs> so the narrowest width in this circular turnaround is 20 feet. We did our uh, turning. Swept path. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I've lost my mind. It's late. Uh, and so that, which we provided in that package I believe you all have that shows that the fire truck can come in both ways and come in through the parking lot by widening these areas that that will give him all of his the 
access that he required. Uh, they also met and determined that the building would be sprinkler, and that also helped with some of our discussions. Part of the building. Not the whole thing. The whole thing. Okay. All right, thank you. We had, we had a lightning analysis done uh, that we have revised since the beta saw it uh, because it, they noted that the lighting hadn't been included on the buildings. I've included that in this package. Um, but basically, what we've done is the, the, the lighting people we revised. That's one of the revisions you see here. Is the lighting has been changed to be able to light the parking lot and not uh, light off site. Um, we added a grass swale since the last meeting uh, to increase our stormwater uh, to try and treat some of the existing pavement. Uh, Beta asked that we provide check dams, so we've put P-stone check dams at 20 foot intervals throughout this swale. Um, I think those are the major things that uh, we addressed, uh, we did provide, Beta also asked that we provide uh, the type of trees that we're adding that has been changed on the plan on sheet four. I put in uh, the type of tree that we're having on this. That's on sheet, sorry, four. It's not on the color version, it's on the revised sheet. Uh, so we're putting in, they would like to put in red maples, we're putting in two and a half inch caliper, and those would be six trees along the north side. Beta asked us to look at doing the south side, there's a fence that runs along here. This neighbor has some specific trees that they would like to add, um, so we're putting in two trees, they've been given two species that they would like, um, and they would be placed in the area on her property where she would like them. There isn't a lot of space between the building and what's out there now for trees to plant, so she was very agreeable to putting trees on her side. Um, I think those are the main things. The AC, the AC units, we don't have a cut sheet. What was Beta's comment on the AC units? Uh, we don't have a cut sheet for the AC units yet um, because they haven't chosen what they're going to be. We've located them under the uh, under the second story deck because it allows us to provide screening on the side so that uh, we can direct any sound away from people. So uh, AC units are not as loud as they used to be and that's what their goal is because they don't want loud units going on either with uh, services or with uh, the residential area up above. And then uh, I believe those are the main issues that we had um, outstanding. Uh, there are some waivers that we would request for uh, for the project, but those were the main items that um, we had going forward. Okay. Um, John, any updates on this from you? Um, Chief Slammon? Any updates? You're good? It's a thumbs up. Um, so uh, we'll have um, Steve, I apologize, I don't remember your last name. We'll have our beta representative just uh, quickly give us your um, assessment. Yeah, she addressed most of the comments. The first one we have received the swept path, we reviewed it, and we were okay with it. So as long as the fire department is okay with that, the attorney review should be acceptable. Um, the screening, we'll have to see what they've added since the last comments. Um, but I just want the applicant to make sure that what they're providing meets what's specified in the screen bylaw and make sure it's actually sufficient to shield the parking lot from view. So there was a few trees, but maybe they need to be, they, they need to be denser if they need to be staggering. We'll see. We'll see what they have. So both sides do have fences. Yeah, you've adjusted the lighting plan to meet this, so we'll review um, what you actually added. And um, same thing with the check dams. It sounds like she added them to the swale, so we will take a look at the design and make sure that it should be fine. And then finally, there was a comment SW4. The applicant will need to provide an operations and maintenance plan for the stormwater. Which was 
added to the plan on the last. Yeah, that was added. That was in the previous revision. Um, other than that, there's some conditions we recommend in here, but those are the big um, comments. Okay. Do you have any additional conditions beyond? Um, Uh, P5, uh, uh, provide responses to determine adequates for beta, for beta for comments uh, P5, SP4, SP6, SW1, SW2, and SW4. I don't believe so. Um, I'll check with Bill to make sure nothing's come up from the latest revisions. Okay. So, um, I know it's late. Um, I'm wondering if we can, we have a, an outline here, I'm wondering if we can kind of go through this in mass and see if there are any particular <coughs> topics that people want to get into that people are uncomfortable with. And what I'm going to say is that I, I think maybe what we can do is there's still a couple of outstanding items for beta to review, but I believe we've done that in the past where we can approve it if we voted to approve it, we could do so conditionally upon beta's final review of those landscaping, lighting, and maintenance plan of which they have not reviewed. Does that make sense? That's good. Yep. If, if I may just add another point of clarification. The beta letter came in Thursday afternoon, so it, they may have addressed everything, and I just haven't had a chance to review all of it, so I don't want to I don't want anyone, anyone to think that Things may not have been addressed and beta may not have reviewed them. I don't know how much you looked into it, Steve, but um, they responded, but it was a very late response. So, okay. so we did not see that response, right? Or did so I sent it separately. So it was after the memo went out. Okay. They, I yeah, just, I remember I reading it, but I can't remember. If I it should have come like probably Thursday afternoon. Okay. I don't and remember. What are the waivers that are requested? Or we're not there yet? Uh, requested waivers um, provide sidewalk, sidewalks along the entire frontage of the subject property uh, along existing that's public it. ways. And that's it. Yeah, which and there overhead, isn't. And overhead wires, because there's existing overhead wires to the front of the building. Mm. Everything else can be, but the, it's just the wires that connect to the main building. Okay, so John, I don't see that yeah, waiver on the list here. I don't know when, was that? added recently? Mm. Was that explicitly called out? I could have sworn yeah, I, thought, I thought it was in beta's review. Yes, uh, SP1 under site plan standards. All right, so that, that was just missed on my part. Okay. That I didn't add as a memo. Okay. okay. So um, let's go through the outline very quickly. Um, vehicular and pedestrian traffic flow, truck traffic flow, emergency vehicle access. It sounds like that's been addressed. The one exception would be the sidewalks along the entire frontage of the subject property. Um, but is there any further discussion about that? Um, yes. Yeah, I think that's fine. You know, there's okay. no sidewalk on that side of the street currently. Okay. Or on that street. Yep. Right. Yeah. And when you are walking, it's pleasant. Yep. All right. Intended uses. I think we're pretty clear on that. Um, stormwater management, um, sounds like there is a little bit of a additional review for beta. Yeah, the main thing is just the operation and maintenance plan. Yeah. But they've addressed your other, your other points uh, of concern. They have a check down, which is I noticed on the drawing that the check down is on uh, the neighboring property. Is that just a graphic? Uh, is there a There's there? no check down, so they're all <coughs> the top of the is right here. And the check down is right in the ditch, in the swale. Oh. Oh, so is that a redrawn stone wall? Um, there's a, there's a, this is a, an existing oh, piece of wall. Sight lighting. And stop me if you um, have a comment. Utilities, water, sewer use, um, parking lot layout, dumpster location, snow storage, snow removal. Remind me, is there a dumpster? No, there is no dumpster. There is no dumpster. Noise, HVAC exhaust systems, screening of HVAC if applicable. Talk to that. Um, crosswalk location, sidewalks. Uh, building design and landscaping. Um, historic structures. I did have a question about that. I really appreciate you keeping the old building here. I think it looks wonderful. 
With the new parking lot entrances, will the fence be impacted, the historic fence? No. Okay. Are you worried about the road yeah. I was worried about the road <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. so It looks like you have to cut back a little bit. It is going to be cut back a little bit, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. It's so oh. gorgeous. It's, it's so mm -hmm. gorgeous. That's not small anymore. No. <laughs> I used to go out in front of that. <laughs> I had, um, I had a further clarification about the HVAC. Um, although you stated that it's going to be more quiet, does it meet the criteria of the piece of equipment itself being under the deck? Like, what is the height difference? Because if it if it's too contained, I've, I've dealt with this in other projects, that you won't get the proper air circulation, and in the end, it's going to be louder. Um, can you speak a little bit to that? Um, the HVAC guys said there would be no no problem because it's not going to be. I think it's going to be on 16 or 20 tons total, so they're not big units. Everything's just going to so be. So what's the, do you know the height underneath? The I deck? it depends on what manufacturer they get it from, but we have plenty of height. There's, oh, okay. there's plenty of room. It's, this, it's a second story deck, and we're at the bottom. Oh, okay. Okay. There's a stairway going down. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, signage. No change in the signage. No change. Right? Right? Uh, solar panels, alternative energy. Uh, wasn't enough roof space to make it worth uh, doing anything, talking to the architect. Too many nooks and crannies, and mm. the slope of the thing doesn't make Beautiful it. Beautiful roof. That's too bad. Affordable housing, I don't think it's applicable. Impacts on schools, other municipal services, value neighborhood, neighboring residential properties. Um, I think I should, we should know too for the record that. We did have a neighbor come in last time and support them. Yes, right. that's true. Um, town department and board committee comments not covered above. And I will say that there was uh, no comment from John Westerling. Board of Health. Uh, board of Health. Um, board of Health comments were general in nature. Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, design review board, lights to be installed on site. Shall be those determined to be considerate to adjacent properties. And you complied with the 15 foot height versus yes. 20 foot. Yes. Yeah, the second revision would change that. <coughs> okay. Um, additional or new comments and information? Yeah. So, um, last beta last, last time went through, um, sort of made a comment that the new roof um, was going to be obviously much larger in square foot. And that the drainage on that um, north side was, um, he was looking for some kind of relief on that north side, and I don't see anything. We did. We put the grass whale in. That was the grass whale that was added in the pool. I thought he was looking for something more up against the side of the building, no? No, he was looking for something, on, anything to catch the pavement, something that was coming off the existing pavement. Okay. So we so did. He just chose the other side. Right. All right. I was interpreting it as the loss. The loss of that one side mm -hmm. to try to find some kind of grass area to, to pull it because it's going to be coming off. I, I, I'd have to look at the elevations, but you're going to be getting water, you know, coming from the roof all the way through. So you're going to be, it's going to be coming right at the cars at some point. So this whole section the one's here, right up against the building. This whole section here, is, although I show the outline of the new building, this whole section here is being picked up. This whole section of the building is being picked up, which has never been picked up before. And then he asked us to look to see if we could put a grass wheel along this side. Okay. They were only comment to us putting the grass wheels, could we add some check dams that might add some retention of water in that, in that check, in this as well. Okay, so they were all right with it. The, he was all right with the, it yeah. all along that side. Yes, but, okay. but, but the comment to add um, something to slow things down, to compartmentalize. Okay, thank you. Um, moving forward, standards and findings. Discuss site plan standards and plan revisions to be made. If people don't think we have anything there. Um, special permit findings, if applicable. Discuss findings and standards for other approvals, if applicable. So it leaves us. It, so it's really just finding that it conforms to all the site plan standards. Okay. Two ten one thirty six point one. Two ten one thirty six. Two ten dash one thirty six point one site plan standards. Okay. Which is our okay. It's on page 
page 17. 17 of your memo? Yes. Okay. I don't know if it's necessary to go through all of them. There are quite a few. <coughs> yeah, let's not read the whole thing. Nope. Um, all right. And then, so I think we can move forward. So we have two waivers, two requested waivers, not one. Um, but if it's okay, we can go ahead and uh, just to be consistent, we'll vote on each of those waivers. Um, so that first, um, I will entertain a motion to uh, grant a waiver pursuant to section 210-136.1.M, referencing sidewalks along the entire frontage of subject property along uh, existing public ways. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. And then the um, waiver for the overhead wires, that is? Section 210-136.1.E. Dot E. So I will entertain a motion to grant a waiver pursuant to section uh, 210-136.1.E. So moved based on the fact that it's pre-existing building that's just being expanded. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? And this is just to clarify, it's, it's only the wires from Hayden Row to the front of the building. Can that be in the, in the, is it in the motion or is it, you know, just understood as part of the, what's in the plans? That's what they're now, so it's okay. in the plans. Plans, okay. For the plan as presented. Yes. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, motion carries. Um, all right, conditions of approval. So there are a couple that are listed here. Um, those being one, that the existing on-site shed shall be relocated so as to be in conformance with the zoning bylaw. Um, and then there are also some proposed conditions that are related to beta's responses, provide responses, determine, uh, provide responses to determine adequate by beta for comments P5, SP4, SP6, SW1, SW2, and SW4 of the letter dated September 19th, 2019, prior to issuance of a building permit. So moved. Um, hang on. Nope. Um, <laughs> but before we get there, um, I think that, that we want to also include conditions on the landscaping plan, the lighting plan, um, and the stormwater maintenance. <coughs> It sounds like I've not been reviewed by beta. I thought those were included. Those are not included in there. In SP4, SP6, and SW1, I have to pull it up and check. Well, could we, we could start it here. SP4 is included, this is the lighting plan. Okay. SP6 is the air conditioner. I don't know what the other number was. SW1? SW1 is the check dams. The yep. check SW2? SW2, yep. SW4? Um, yeah. There were no comments on that. SW4 is the owner. Is the what? The operation operation maintenance. Maintenance. Okay. So all, all those are part of the... And P5. That's the landscaping plan. That's landscaping. Yep. Okay, thank you. All right, are there any other conditions that we want to consider? Okay. Um, so just to be clear, um, these appear to be satisfied, but we don't have not heard formally from Beta. What is the mechanism if there is they there isn't they aren't satisfied? How are we going to word that? I'm submitting so, my plans now. The read the redo that we just did now, and when they respond, then we'll respond back. So my understanding yeah. is that the building permit can't be issued until those are. Matt. Okay. All right. Uh, by, the, by the way, you guys have been unbelievably responsive. Seriously. They did really good too. It's, they were very good. Yeah. Been been great work um, in real time. Good job. Uh, so we were wondering if um, designer, if you should look at the lighting too. Or that's part of it. But that's what we've also submitted to beta. Okay. I'm sorry. You've also submitted what to beta? The lighting plan. But design review board board is different. 
They just asked that we add lighting because there was inadequate lighting. Okay. And that it meet the requirements, which is what this process is. So design report said lights to be installed on site shall be those determined to be considered of adjacent properties. I guess it wasn't very Satisfied. specific. Yeah. Um, I mean, is there? It's a. I mean, we're all motivated to get this done for you know a community neighbor. Um, I just want to make sure that um, we don't we don't rush past something that we could we could accommodate and I'm happy to word it any way that accommodates it mo most fluidly. Yes. Um, I just want to make sure that we're all satisfied that I would I would um, put forth that some consideration to design that's appropriate with the existing structure be looked at and resubmitted. Although there's so much work that's gone into this and I'm to I totally appreciate it but the, what, what's been put forth is um, sort of not, it's sort of a larger par parking lot uh, formula versus um, Chesmore's uh, historic elements that you want to kind of capture. So I'm just wondering if we could possibly put, take, take that into consideration and, and, um, and look for something um, as, as cool and neat and have all the features, but then a little bit more historic. So what, what for the lighting? specifically are lighting. Um, lighting. I'm, I'm, Yeah, um, I'm, I'm looking at the lighting and it's um, pretty cool stuff, but I'm just thinking that it may not be. It's kind of hard to be historic and be. There uh, might, there's probably something out there. I know. You can ask them to take a look. All right. Yeah, I'll look at some of the stuff, but it depends on, yeah. I know some of the stuff's very expensive as yeah. it might be switched down the road as... Yeah, I'm on the fence on that myself. It, so the lighting on the building is not changed, it'll still be the historic look, right? They said, yeah, there's nothing going to be... Yeah, it'll, it'll still have like the scon, uh, like traditional. So we're talking about just parking lot lights? Uh, parking lot lights and I think a couple of like little ones that you wouldn't even see on the building if we need to light up more parking lot. Because it'll blend right in with uh, the trim. Like whatever the light engineer tells me that has to, to go. It's nothing, not going to look like a mall. Mm -hmm. No, the light levels are not a concern, right? They seem to meet the standard. The, the levels seem to meet the standard. <coughs> and, and it's relatively neutral, but it's it still might, there, there might be something else out there that would be a little bit nicer, but not necessarily more expensive. Yeah, so no, I'll take a look to see what I um, can another good. Follow-up question, great question, um, Deb, that Mary asked earlier along similar lines. Do you have a resource you can share? Yes. I will. I will. I'll, I'll see if I can find something. Because yeah. uh, that might be really helpful. Okay. okay. Yeah. There's okay. a company in Canada that makes some really nice features. But I'll check. I'll check. I know. I'll check. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll, sorry. All right. Any other... Are there any final public comments? No. Okay. Um, all right, so then I guess um, we can move forward to closing the public hearing. And then once we close the public hearing, then um, we can vote on the permits being requested. So at this point, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Any discussion? <coughs> do we normally do that or do we normally vote and then close the public hearing? So we normally do it the other way, but I have a real fondness for this way. Okay. And I, I, you know, I, came, why. I came into uh, this process, and you guys had a functionality that was different, but it's really more clear if you close sure. it. Sure. Okay. You're closing There's no need to change. Them, no, we're just closing this one. This one. Huh? Yep. And somebody else will continue. Yep. Yeah, that's oh, one we'll continue. Okay, okay. All right. All those in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay, public hearing is closed. So now we can move forward on voting. Make sure I get this language right. Um, so the decision criteria, the planning board shall issue a decision of site plan review in one of the following forms. Um, a written approval of the application subject to reasonable conditions. Modifications and restrictions related to site plan standards contained in section 210.136.1. 
um, or disapproval of the application if the applicant fails to furnish the information, materials, or fees required in this article or by the submission requirements and procedures adopted by the planning board, or if the applicant and site plan pres present a problem so intractable so <coughs> to admit of uh, no reasonable solution. Notwithstanding the above, regulation of uses and structures referred to in Section 3 of Chapter 48 of Massachusetts General Law shall be limited to the extent required by said section. So, um, I will entertain a motion to um, grant this approval with the following proposed conditions. Uh, one, the existing on-site shed shall be relocated so as to be in conformance with the zoning bylaw. Two, provide responses uh, to determine adequate, determined to be adequate by beta for comments P5, SP4, SP6, SW1, SW2, and SW4 of the letter dated September 19th, 2019, prior to issuance of a building permit. So moved. Second. Is there any further, any last discussion? <coughs> all right, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Are you going to go this throughout the winter? Or? Yeah, hopefully we will be weather tight before the snow. Yeah, we're going to try to do this last discussion. Cedar Street. Okay. Is that point of clarification, Rob? Did you watch the video in the last meeting? I did not. So you cannot watch the video. Yeah, I know. Okay. And Jane, thank you. And Jane, thank you. Could you have myself? Uh, All right. Yeah, okay. the majority. Yeah. We've got one last topic. This is going to go really quick. He's been very patient and waiting, so I know we're all tired, but um, actually, so we don't need to close any other public hearings, correct? Okay. No, we don't. Close, close the meeting. Yeah. Adjourn yeah. the meeting. Okay. So. Um, Did you start the uh, yes, yes, the plan was in the package. Yep. Mr. Isidore, thank you for your patience. We've been here a long time. We've been here a long time as well. But uh, I know you're tired, so that, and I'm happy to come back some other time. There's no rush. Um, I just wanted to discuss a little bit about what was going on with this particular site, which is on Cedar Street. It's roughly about 30 acres. It was at one time a 60-acre parcel. Uh, eight of the acres, approximately eight of the acres, was actually in the Hopkinton Reservoir. And in the 1890s, when they built the reservoir, they took this uh, friendly taking by the city of Boston, eminent domain. At that time, it had frontage on the road that ran through the reservoir, and they built a new road, which is 85, which is Cedar Street. I think this was intended to have frontage on Cedar Street because obviously it had frontage beforehand, and he voluntarily gave the land up. But somehow through a series of things that have taken place without boring you here, the state takes the position that they own the land of about 15 feet from Cedar Street inward on my property so that technically we don't have any frontage on Cedar Street. We've never litigated the question, but years ago in the early 2000s, we divided the land up so that the 50-some acres was divided into the 30 that's still remaining and the 20-some went up at the top and negotiated with Toll Brothers for access onto Overlook Drive. They were building the subdivision out there. And the long and the short of that was a 24-unit uh, condominium complex got built on that particular site at the top. So we were left with this property that had this question of frontage on Cedar Street. It has enough it has 705 feet if, in fact, it had the frontage. And our claim was that the state's basically denying us access, but we've never litigated the question. We just left it. When I deeded the property, to the developer that did the 24 units, we reserved an easement over the condominium property onto the, the far west side of our property. So we can still have a right to get in, but we don't have frontage. But we have access rights to get out to um, over the condominium property, which is called Trevor Lane, but it's a private driveway mm -hmm. for the condominium. Out to Overlook, which is a public street now, which takes you out to Cedar Street extension and then ultimately to Cedar Street. So we've been trying to figure out what to do with this piece and hearings like this and my getting older, I get older all the time. I'm not really looking to try and do anything that, that maximizes the, the, 
total potential economic return. I'm trying to figure out something that could both benefit the town and benefit myself and partner as well. One of those concepts was, what's that? You want to donate it? I, I, I am going to donate a big portion of it, yes. Um, that was the concept. The, the idea was one possible solution <coughs> on this proposal was to use the, um, go to the state and make uh, it's an arrangement with the state that they would agree that we have frontage, that we, we have access for purposes of creating two A and R lots, which we could do. We could create as many as three. But we create two. We would then access those lots from the easement, which would need a variance from the Board of Appeals because we're not accessing over our The Trevor Street easement. Trevor, Trevor, Trevor Lane for two house lots. The houses would be roughly an acre, acre and a half at the top, and the rest of the land we would we thought we would do, depending on what the town wants to do, but we would put it in a conservation restriction, including the frontage, so it would never be accessed. So the state wouldn't lose anything by agreeing that we had the frontage because we would never be able to access that frontage. And then we would, of course, we'd have to keep it as the two lots because the lots technically have frontage on Cedar Street. We would just then do a conservation restriction for you know 25 of the 30 acres, for example, on the benefit, for the benefit of the town. As we've been going through this proposal, we've had some inquiry from a private um, recreation facility about the possibility of looking for land to do soccer fields and so forth. I heard when I came in here talking about athletic fields. I don't know if the town has any interest in athletic fields, but that's another possibility which we would just, if this entity is willing to pay some money and the town can use the fields, I don't know. That's another is, possibility. Isn't that, a, sorry, isn't that a hilly section? What's that? Isn't that a hilly section? It is a hilly section, so I don't know what would be involved in trying to build retaining walls and so forth to do so. So I'm, I'm just going to, this was the proposal that we thought was 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 the best proposal. Um, we had some discussion about doing some kind of small, friendly 40B, not a big project, because then we wouldn't need a variance to access this over the easement area. But I think the two lot proposal seems to be the best proposal. We've tried to make arrangements. We haven't been able to get the meeting, but we're looking to getting a meeting with the state to sit and talk to them about this this uh, frontage issue because I, I think if we litigated the question or had to say we were going to try to access the frontage, everybody would be upset about accessing Cedar Street on the frontage. But I think if we said, hey, we're doing this frontage as part of a development agreement and the frontage will never be used, it will be less of a an issue for the state. So they might have to do an RFP, but if the RFP was, you know, donate this other land and do all the conservation restrictions, the only people that could do answer the RFP is us because we have the land to put the restrictions on. So I really was just coming here to kind of get some feedback and identify the proposal. I had met informally with John and Muriel a couple months ago and then kind of we did this. They didn't see a plan, so I wanted to show them what the concept plan looked like. So, so I can just advise exhausted. So. <laughs> if I could just clarify, basically what you're, what what it would take to do this is you would need the the state to acknowledge frontage in some capacity, right. and then you'd need a variance to the easement in order to access those parcels from Trevor Lane, right. and then to some degree you would need us to acknowledge that the state recognized the frontage is sufficient to build those two A and R to do the lots. A and R lots, right. and it would all be part of some form of development agreement so that unless everything came into being I, so, so that you don't have to worry about me having the benefit of an AR plant and then somehow this didn't happen and I was building a house down on Cedar Street. It was all part of an agreement that it all has to fall in place for me to be able to, <coughs> to do all of it. So it, it's, I think the Hopkins Land Trust owns the land to the south and the state owns the land to the north up to Cedar Street Extension. I remember when the condominium was built I got a request from the, I didn't develop the condominium, but I got a request from the condominium owners at the time to see if there were no trespassing sites because there was some hunting. I don't know if some hunting takes place on, on this land, but they were accessing from the condominium land to get down there. But I think so just, having a connection where they could, for trails and so forth, where they could go, they might be doing it already, not from the standpoint, but to be able to have a restriction so that they could cross over it would be the idea. Right. So. Do you have through the chair, do you have any uh, management or ownership in Trevor Lane properties? No, I just have the easement over. 
We did. We we owned that piece, but we and we got the permits for it. But Historically, then you sold guys it in actually were. Okay, so you were involved then. Right. So you know the history of the, at least from then to now. Yes. Um, do, do they plow their own street, or uh, is there management services that handle things there, or is it the town? That I don't. Know. Uh, um, I'm assuming they do because I think I both. Sometimes. <laughs> I mean, it's no, private, I so I don't know. Yeah. Overlook, I assume, is done by the town. Yeah. So, so my my initial reaction, it seems like your request is fairly reasonable. That being said, we're certainly, I think, sensitive to conforming to our bylaws, as you saw in some of our other discussions tonight. So, it's hard to say without seeing details, but you know, to me, that seems like a. The only other thing that I would add, this is obviously very unusual, and I'm not opposed to creative thinking or uh, unusual approaches, and it all works. Um, the only thing I would add is that there's some uh, absolute maximum on the number, if it all comes together, as you say, and it is actually actualized, um, that the number of houses is fixed and finite at two, and the number of acreage that is de designated yeah. as to be put under conservation restriction is fixed at Whatever it's be. Do you have any role in the land that's from available off of North Cedar uh, Cedar Street Extension? That's uh, north of your project. No, I did once have the inquiry, but I was just going to listen to Borrego because I had interest by at Borrego one time doing solar down there. Okay. If I may, Chair, make two more points. Um, I think we discussed, and maybe I'm making this up, the possible need for a common driveway special permit. No, I think I forgot. So, so, I, think so I think there would be a, a special permit for common driveway access. So would that be a variance and a common driveway? I didn't, it would I be didn't a special permit from the planning board and then a variance from the board of appeals. Because you wouldn't be doing two different driveways, correct? No, we do, well, two different driveways to their house location, but one driveway that would take you out to Chevrolet. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, and then I, we talked about this, but I, I didn't look into it. I don't know how the special permit or any kind of permits for Trevor Lane were approved, but if there is any kind of access, it would be, there may need to be some modifications to that permit if something is written there. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think there were, the Conservation Commission said that it wouldn't provide, that there wouldn't be any further access, but I interpreted that to mean we're still using the same access. If there wouldn't, the condominium wouldn't create another access out to out to overall. Yeah. Well, that's for the conservation yeah. commission. I don't know if Trevor Lane was issued a special permit or any kind of approval, what was said in that approval okay. regarding access for other property off of its own. Yeah, we'd have to look at that because if there's anything in there that needs. But the, the idea was, at one time we looked at doing three lots and, and <coughs> the rather than so forth like two is fine and do the conservation restriction and I can go do something. So, it's it's late, so I'm gonna uh, recommend. Yep. Quick quick question. Okay. So the not? property the property in between Overlook and your property and the condos that narrow strip there are there homes there? That no. The just, condominiums uh, condominium units start further away. From no, but uh, are there any homes on Overlook? Yes, on Overlook. Oh, on Overlook, there's homes. Yeah. yeah. So are you going to be like building behind a house behind a house on Overlook? Overlook? It's further, further. It's Can pretty far. Okay, it's not, it's not an immediate section. Yeah, right it's there. pretty okay. far away. It's pretty okay. far away. Thank right. you. Um, thank you. We okay. appreciate your patience. Thank you. I appreciate Interesting you. discussion. We look forward to hearing it. So, so um, keep you I'm going to entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.